Oh, stop it, Shannon. Don't, come on. I'm not offended by the state, could I? It's to me. I'll answer you correctly. You can definitely bench more than me because I've, I don't been, I, I, did I even, I have never bench press once, Sam. <laughs> That's fucking, and I'm not a man for that. I do need to try it. But I would probably max out, I don't know, like 150. Like, I'd be a bitch on a bench. I, I, would, I would suck on the bench, bro. But I do, I have my own method of working out. So, you know what I mean? I don't do it by bench pressing and shit. I have different ways. But, yeah. I, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, come on, Shani. See, you're one of those guys that I would just tear. Comp well, I have for years now, Sam. Uh, what is with this competition with you against my husband all the time? What the hell are you talking about? No, no, no. It's always like, let me put in a little competition with Rev. I'm better than Rev in this way, and I'm better than Rev in this way. What's up with that? What's up with the dick waggling, scientist, Sam? Let me go. What's what? What's up with the dick waggling, boy? What's up with it? Huh? 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 What, what's up with it? Why? Why you gotta be like? Who does this better than me? Women don't do shit like that. Like, see, if a woman knows that another woman makes or does like makeup better or something or does something better, it's like, oh, wow, how do you do that? Can you teach me how to do it? Like, they're better cooker or something or a better like, the, like, what is the recipe? You know, that's what women do. Men on the other is like, who's better me? Like the constant like comparison instead of like, let's see if we can prove, improve each other together. That is toxic masculinity scientist sam that you're displaying you are displaying toxic masculinity and your mancho your your chauvinist male egotistical bait and self He knows. Scientist Sam knows that I am the ponage master. And he may try to defeat this queen, but he cannot. Because he's just a rook. A rook? Okay. You're a rook. Oh, you're a rook on the board. I see. Yeah. A rook. A pawn? You gave him a rook at least. Yeah, he's just an L for loser. Oh, no, I would say that scientist Sam would a hundred and thousand percent like he's he's really fit. Like your upper body structure, I could say, what do you what do you max out at? What? Two hundred bench to two twenty. I'm just gauging like by looking at your upper body structure, you you're fit, dude. You look good. So, no, you could kill me. You could probably destroy me in arm wrestling, too. Because you're, you're fucking, you're cut, man. You look good. <laughs> Rev is stronger than any atheist. Well, thank you, curious boys. That's very nice. I got the Holy Spirit, bro. Thank you, Sherry Lynn. 240. I was actually going to say that number first, but I... I was saying I'm not I don't want to treat you like a bitch. That's hey, that's fucking respectable, dude. 240. Sam's a man. You can lift me up, scientist Sam. You can lift me up. He wanna lift you, huh? He wishes he would lift me up. I saw that smile on your face, bro. I saw the smile. I saw the blushing. I saw the dirty look in your eye like, oh, my God, I want that. <laughs> oh, yeah, folks. This is why people called me a Nigerian pimp. Because I was getting on camera sometimes and saying, look at this fucking woman. 
like, oh my God. You know what I mean? I was doing that sometimes and it was a little too, you know, <laughs> I had a seizure there, folks. You know what I mean? It's true. She's very attractive, folks. So I had people calling me a fucking Nigerian pimp, folks. I am King Mutombo from Africa, South East Africa. You just yeah, you give me three thousand dollars from your bank account, I give you one million US dollar. You understand? I'm King Zabubu from South Africa. This is insane, folks. Yeah, I'll leave that for real. All right, hey, I am having the best sex that a guy could have, so it's fine. I'll take care of this one, Sam. There's a lot of them out there that want you, bro, I'm sure. Attractive male. Fit male. I... <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. He'd snap his spine. Oh, my God. Jonathan Green, can you be my next husband? I'm just wondering. Can you be my next husband? I'm in love with you. Yeah, that's just an unacceptable fucking statement to make. See, see, there's double standards in behavior on the show, folks, but that's okay. I respect my wife, and I would never say that, but. Again, the double standard is you can do anal on me. I don't do anal on you. But wait a minute. I respect the individual known as Shanty for Christ, and I don't do anal on you. Is that correct, anal? Is that correct, anal? <laughs> Is that correct, Shanny? I don't violate that. Did you just call me an asshole? No. <laughs> Individuals in the room. All right, listen to me. I don't violate that, though. Are you going to lie on me and say that I just take it out of your pussy when we're going doggy style and put it right in your fucking asshole? I don't do that. It's crossed my mind, I won't lie. Okay, because... It, <laughs> See, I had a real doll torso, folks. So I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, See, I'm an open book. If you could just have fun learning, getting to know me, because I'm kind of funny. Okay? Hey, I had a real do doll torso, folks. So I exercised... I exercised this stuff ill. See, uh, that's fine. You could cut, say ill to it. I cleaned the thing, okay? I cleaned it. It wasn't like sitting up there smelling like jizz. I didn't. I cleaned it. I cleaned it. But anyway, on that doll, it's fun to get like to, it exercises and makes your dick more whatever, oh. right? One more thing and I'll stop. Okay, promise. I'm sorry that it went here, but I'm just doing this because it has to be done. The endurance level was pretty much there, folks. I was like slamming that thing 15 minutes at least. I could go 15, 20 minutes and just slam the shit out of it, okay? But there's a feature with it because it does have a vagina and a butthole. So you can go back and forth and back and forth inside the two holes, and it's kind of fun. It's like a video game. It's like a video. Does Real Doll want to sponsor me to sell their torsos? I could have some fucking reviews there for you. <laughs> but it doesn't feel like a real pussy, folks. No way. And especially not hers. Because she's got like the... It's like rose petals. Moist rose, rose petals. And the feeling on the member. Oh, the feeling on the member. Oh, okay, that's it. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God, babe. Now Arthur talking about having sex with his wife. It's my wife. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm done. Are you done? My ass off. They like that. Are you done? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well. They are already. I, I have news in Von for the Irvinites. They already are taking notes of the videos or, or the video of um of Von Helton's Rage Fest 2020. 
um on my channel always exclusively on shanty for christ i always have the von helton rage fests um so uh -huh. <sighs> they're already taking notes and they're leaving the notes in the timeline so if you want to look at the notes in the timeline notes go ahead because that i know that video is probably going to be dissected probably for about 15 years oh, yeah, and they'll probably make Vaughn look like the worst person in the entire world and crazier than what he really is. Yeah. But I, I always welcome Vaughn Helton on my channel and I will always give him the mods and I will always give him the respect because really he likes the fight at the end of the day. Don't let him make you think he doesn't like the fight. He actually enjoys this shit. Yeah. Vaughn enjoys this shit. Yeah, Vaughn's fine. He's talking smack in my oh, comments yeah, section. He's in, comments. he's in the comments section just fucking blaming me for his kids being taken away right Vaughn, now. Give me, <laughs> give me the fucking microphone. Vaughn, are you a fucking child, Vaughn? Do I have to be like your, your younger father figure, Vaughn? Do I have to be Vaughn Hilton's daddy? Oh, I'll do that for you, folks. Why are you doing this, Vaughn? You have fucking mods. Stop acting like a fucking child. The Vaughn father situation. <laughs> if you want to play this game... I'm a boy. All right, motherfucker. You brought him out. You got him out, Vaughn. It's your daddy, motherfucker. You got... I'm sorry. I'm too loud. Get your ass in here now, Vaughn. Get your... That's right, Curious Boys. Get Vaughn on the show situation now. You have mods here, dude, okay? You got to stop acting like a fucking child, Vaughn. I'm Vaughn's dad today, and I'm telling you that Bone's getting a spanking. It's time for the boy to learn a lesson. Get your butt in here and make make start acting like an internet personality that can actually respond to people without fucking raging at them for eight fucking hours, Vaughn. Can you be an adult? Come in the room, Vaughn situation individual. <laughs> that is an accurate position of what happened last night i tried man i always try with vaughn it's just people come in the room and he's like he's always like let the hater in let the hater in fine you might as well let the hater in they they're gonna go and come in anyway so you let them fucking in right and then he's like complaining and bitching that you let them in, but it's like you told me to. Exactly. He even said it's okay. Like, Vaughn, I know that you are deep. You, I mean, you look unassuming. You're not an intimidating looking guy. Okay. I know you're tough, though. And you can take it, dude. You've been in this, you've been in the biz of this fucking hangout, whatever you would call it, for a long time. You can handle it, dude. And you don't have to rage for fucking eight hours at people. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. <laughs> There's nothing else I could say to you folks, okay? I'm trying to be as nice as I can be with because I really do like Vaughn. <laughs> I do. I always like Vaughn. He's a truther. He's got situations going on, folks. He he made really good co co content. I'm starting to get indigestion, folks. Vaughn's a clown. He needs to come in for a talking situation. That's correct and accurate statement. That's a correct and accurate statement. He He has to stop Make oh it's drag. What's up? The Sith Lord's in the house, bros. Hi, drag. Sp 
speak, you. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I thought Vaughn was going to come in and grace us with another rage. Oh, I know. And now it's drag again. Drag not. He's saying that we fucking did something wrong because we didn't coddle the child. We didn't really? coddle. Hey, hey, drag not. We did not coddle the child enough, drag. You don't I, say. I, yeah, he didn't like the situation of actually having to address individuals. He wants us to fucking baby him, Drag, and it's not going to happen. I'm fucking done with it, you know? So what was the straw that broke the camel's back? His raging. <laughs> well, no, I'm always raging. Yeah, I know, exactly. It's not, no, it's the, it was because, I guess it was Kenny KPZ. You know, oh. if, yeah, exactly. I asked, we both did. Shani and I asked him, hey, Vaughn, should we let Kenny KPZ in? Oh, yeah, let the motherfucking troll in that, that, that got my fucking family destroyed. Sure, let the motherfucking troll in. And we said, no, Vaughn, seriously, do you want us to let him in? He said, sure, let him in. So he's being a fucking baby with a shitted diaper drag and Sam. Hi, Sam. So, I, like, I, I guess I don't understand why he wanted to have people come into a discussion only to get pissy with people. Like, I, I don't know. What is the purpose behind people who do that? Uh, I don't know. He needs anger management. That's all I can say about that. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Like, I, well, I mean, amongst <laughs> other things, it just seems worthless to say, okay, well, uh, come in and, you know, we'll kumbaya. And then just turn into a, a shitty individual situation. Right. I think he enjoys the fight. Probably. Yeah, he does. It gets his frustrations out. Yeah. And then he gets he 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 begins to not like the fight, but he still stays in the fight because yeah. he's proud and he doesn't want to lose. And <laughs> oh my God. That could be it, but I think that a part of that is, he, you know, if you, you invite somebody in, oops. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I guess hilarious. that's what I get for trying that. All right, careful. All right. Be careful. So, uh, so, he, wait, so you invite, you have somebody come in, yeah. they do kumbaya, and then all of a sudden, everyone's mean to me, and now I'm a victim. That kind of seems like what was going on. Yeah, that's correct and accurate. And also, Drag, do you realize that this guy has mods? We gave him mods in the chat, which is probably insane to give Vaughn mods, but we did. Okay. We we let him come in here and sit in here, and, and, and we treat him very fucking well. Probably too well. And he goes out there in the outside chat and bitches and moans like a baby. Vaughn, stop it. You're being a child, and Dad's going to spank you now. Stop it. Mm. Now, didn't he show you guys some type of evidence of, of some type of harassment of, of involving Kenny? I didn't watch all of yesterday. I was I was doing stuff, but I'd heard about it. Oh, that was uh, and so y'all played that? Yeah, we did. We played the video situation, and it turned out that Vaughn had lied like four times, uh, Drag. <laughs> so you mean to tell me the guy? The, so get on here. We're gonna do kumbaya. All yep. of a sudden, there's victimhood. And there's videos showing that you basically were just lying about stuff in front of people yes. live. Yes. And and see, that's that. Now, that drag right there is professional victimhood that Vaughn's doing. You know what I mean? Jeez. It's pathetic, dude. I agree. <laughs> I yeah. absolutely agree. So there you go. Sith Lord agrees. I'm good. Yeah, I'm. I'm driving right now so I'm, that's why I'm not looking at the screen I'm on my way to get some steak and lobster tail <laughs> nice. you living up the bougie life you meeting up with yeah. Tyrone oh my no God. no I'm just living off my wife's uh, EBT card oh, it's Tyrone it's the EBT card why don't you ask why don't you ask your husband who <laughs> Tyrone yeah, exactly. is. I know where that comes from now that's when I was <laughs> that's when I was so overly triggered with racism and I'll admit this because I'm from Pennsylvania, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's plenty of fucking KKK, and I've known them. They're bad people, too. They're real bad people. But anyway, um, 
I said that I knew of p individuals that happened to be black. It doesn't even matter that they were black, but they bought lobster tails and steak on an EBT card, and my mom saw it, and she was like, what the hell is that? I can't afford that. <laughs> But they were buying it on an ETV BT card. And I swear to you, I saw it too. I remember it. I, I swear to Jesus it happened. Now, maybe they outlawed that. Like, you can, you can only buy certain foods now, maybe. I don't know. But that's a true story. Oh, wow. I mean, that, yeah, they should have been over there eating beans and wieners, you know. I mean, that's beyond EBT. You should only eat the bare minimum. See, I, I, I'll give it to I don't know, man. I don't like. I don't like the bare minimum, dudes. I think if like give, give an allowance to someone where they can have a sufficient fucking diet, you know, yeah. chicken. Yeah. I'm compassionate enough for that. Not like fancy yeah. bougie items like that. Yeah, my mom, like and not particularly steak it. isn't the exact like the most expensive thing in the world either. Just right. to be like. Fair. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. But my mom couldn't afford it. Okay, my mom was living on, of course, investments, which I inherited, and I'm a horrible person for it, apparently. But anyway, uh, it, that she couldn't afford it, though. And and they, they had a freaking EBT card, and she was paying taxes, and she's like, oh, my God. Like, what is that? <laughs> but I'll let it go. That's where the Tyrone shit came from. Uh, and it's fine. It was a very ignorant and nasty thing to say anyway. So it was a true story, but it was still ignorant and nasty to say. But I was triggered and angry at the time. So I'm sorry about that Tyrone situation. I'm tired. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Sam has run into a few Tyrones in his life. So, I mean, it happens. It happens. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? You know, when you go to fucking... BJJ and Tyrone puts you in a headlock and you just kind of snuggle on in. Ah. Dude, black people don't do jujitsu. That's a bougie white thing. Oh, dude. <laughs> okay, the, 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 the brown uh, South American individual situation. Why are you guys being all racist on my channel, dudes? Oh my God. <laughs> it's a little on brand. Brand. No racist yeah. jokes on my channel, man. If I can't make racist jokes, you can't make racist jokes. Those are the rules. Oh, no, we okay. can't. There's, no, we can't. There's like a context, no, though. Like if, no, like no if drag makes an anti-Semitic joke, right. I understand that. Yeah, it's ripping. I get it. Listen, Jew God, no fucking jokes about racism, Jew man. I'm not the Jew God. I don't run the Federal Reserve. <laughs> that I don't know that. You got that Jewy uh, power, though. You that Jewy uh, magical power. <laughs> In the friggin' in the Federal Reserve, we're controlling everything, folks. Oi, my my bar mitzvah was no. I never had the bar mitzvah. Oi, I'm gonna make the people, the chattel, chattel, the cattle pay for it. No, the Jews don't control everything. It's a lie. That's not the big conspiracy, folks. It's not. It's not the Jews. Okay, because settle down. Okay, settle down. Again. Hashtag. What about Jew? Jokes. What about Jew? What about Jew? What is that from? Is that like a meme that's going on? I here? don't. Oh, actually, that reminded me. Uh, just the voice. You kind of almost slipped into the Revelina voice there for a second. Oh my God, I did. I have vestiges of the transsexual experience situation for my individual experience in life. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I. I didn't know you. Okay, I was gonna say cross dressing, but okay. I mean, if that's where we want to go, all right. I don't even know, Drag. You know, that was a very interesting time for me because the wet brain was at the end. It was nearing the end. So, like, my personality was starting to come back. But I don't even know. We were just trolling Sabella massively. Right. Would you it have was, done it if you hadn't had the wet brain? I don't. I have no idea. I, it was just a weird thing we did. And it was to troll Sabella real bad. You know? And to get that G-juice? I had to get the G juice, bro. Exactly. It's like the Gatorade, the blue Gatorade. That's that's like G Man's uh, fluids, I guess. I don't know. Wait, are you saying that G Man comes blue Gatorade? I have no idea, Sam. We don't know that. I know maybe, what. Maybe that's drinks. why he has all the UTIs. I I know what he drinks. What? 
He likes apple oh. juice. He likes apple juice. He does. He likes apple, apple juice. juice. Okay. Yeah. He drinks a lot of apple juice. That's cool. Which is awesome for him, man. He's yeah. probably why his body's so amazing. Ah. Better than the individuals uh, in this room. Uh, no, well, that's, that's <laughs> not true. Uh, no, no, man. Jimmy's yeah, got a much know. better body than you, Sam. Oh, my God. Uh, no, no, he doesn't. I've met Sam and G-Man. No, Sam actually is far more muscular than G-Man. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Holy crap. I don't think so at all. Body ooh, yeah. ooh. Okay. I I'm done. Yeah, but you eat the pussy skills, so I try. I don't think you know you can have I muscles have and it. also eat pussy. Like the jaw is Sam, filled with muscles. Like Sam, the tongue is really just a big muscle. That's true, Sam. Sam, do you like to, do you like going down? I think it's very good. Depends on who. If it smells yeah. like boiled hot dog water down there, well, no, no thank we you. Want, we don't want a. I right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't want a stale fifty year old Gordon Fisherman situation. How is this sexual harassment? I didn't say that she smelled like rancid hot dog water. I said that I don't want to go down on anyone that smells like rancid hot dog water. No, we're not gonna do that. We're going to respect the women's. The women's need respect. The women's don't need to have their vagina smell fucking degraded because it's not a nice thing to do. And you did do that. Shame on you, sir. So wait, you don't judge if a guy's got a stinky dick? Ew, why are you talking to me about this? I don't want to know about no stinky dick. Rev, don't you see? Don't you see? She's she's wanting the, the guy. She doesn't care what our, you know, she cares what our genitals smell like, but not what hers. Oh, I don't, how do you feel about that as the man in the relationship? Ew, this is disgusting. Okay, you're going bye-bye. You're weird. Creepy. I'm not doing this conversation with you guys. Ugh. No. No, you violated me like that. I started this Ugh. I started it. You're penalizing Fine. Fine. Do Fine. 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 You should be penalized too. I, you. I started. It. Present the butt whooping. I must whoop your butt. No, I don't think you want to do that on camera, dude. <laughs> I love you. Don't I, talk about women like no, that. I deserve to be smacked. I do. Because that was degrading. I agree. That was degrading. I do. I totally apologize to the women involved. Because that is disgusting chauvinistic male behavior that should not be tolerated. You don't talk about a woman's smells and, and, and shit like that. It's not cool. I Thank you, Becky. I, I immediately repent. That I can't know individuals. Those individuals did nothing wrong, though. OK, folks, that this was my fucking nastiness. OK, thank you. Yeah, Rev can talk about that stuff. I'm not going to talk about these gentlemen about. Uh, ah, no. Ugh. Fucking. Creepy. Ugh. They already sexually harassed me, and then they start that stuff. Yeah, that's not right. That, but I started Ugh. it. Ugh. I started it. So, I have nothing against Sam and Dre. Ugh. That was my individual situation. <clears throat> he needs help. Oh, my God. Stop it. I don't, He's going I don't to therapy. That was just getting into male talk that should not be tolerated. That should, It's not tolerated. Uh, it is, though. That's what it is. And it's not to be tolerated around gentle women. But that talk happens. It just, the, uh, Like every guy talks like that at some point, which is wrong, but it's just true. 
and it's it should it's behavior that should not be tolerated by women. You're punished for participating in it, Sam. That's why you're punished. I'm not going to. Uh. Yes, that, but it's not just behavior for our individualistic guests. But you, sir, it was my issue, which is why I'm kicked. I don't want to talk to them about this stuff. They already made me feel uncomfortable. They can go away. Ugh. Ugh. They've already stalked me enough as it is. It's kind of creepy. Ugh. I'm sorry. You guys creep me out. Yeah. Sorry. You know. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's a fucking I'll talk about sex with you, baby. Yeah, exactly. That See, I took that too far because I got too comfortable in this conversation. And it led to stupid speech stupid speech juvenile male speech that's what it is and it, it shouldn't be tolerated i know rev started it but i wasn't gonna have a conversation with them about it oh my god okay it's and that's fine it's your show look i don't care i'm feeling uncomfortable with these gentlemen in my room anyway they've done horrible things to me they said horrible things to me and about me. I feel uncomfortable with these gentlemen. I feel uncomfortable with them. They may, they creep me out. They give me the ick. No, I'm sorry. That was not you know what I you know you know what I mean about ladies about the ick, that icky, like, oh God, please don't, don't. Like you you know that one guy that is always up your ass and you're really nice to him and you want you like, okay, we can be friends, but you can tell he really is into you and he does really creepy like things trying to get with you. Yeah. That's how those guys are. And, um, I'm not into that. I like talking about sex with my husband. Right. And this is not with other men. Right. But that is inappropriate and ungodly. Yeah. The fact is, is it's her show. So she says she's uncomfortable. That's it. You cut the behavior, period. It's fucking her show. But it was my fault, so that's why the individuals involved should be in the room. But the, did they leave on their own accord, or did you kick them? I them? Okay, fine. Yeah, it's your show. You can still kick them. But I apologize to Sam and Drag because I started it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry. I can't go that far with them. I can't. But I see... This individual is being honest. I'm staying out of the conversation now, but I'm still using the No, I, I'm out. No, you're not. You come back in. How? It's not respectful. It's not respectful to women. That was too. Oh my god. Okay. Well, it's her show, and I want to respect my oh. my girl. See, 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 see. That is going too far. Yeah. That is going too far. I don't care if you watch my porn. I don't want to talk to you about the stuff. Right. That is, <laughs> oh, do you know how creepy that is? How you think just because you see my pornography, even though you didn't fucking pay for it, asshole, 
Do you honestly think I really want to talk to you about sex, you freak? Go find a fucking chick. I'm sure you're good enough looking to find someone. Why don't you go onto that thing called Tinder and go find some loose goose chick so you can fuck her dry and, and, and not even eat her pussy out because you admit you don't fucking really eat pussy. And then, and then you can go and have your little fun and talk dirty with her. Don't be coming to me and talking fucking dirty to me. I don't want to fucking talk about sex with you, scientist Sam. I think you're disgusting pig. Period. Now, I need to finish what I was doing. Well, like, I'm not going to force my individual uh, conscience to be too torn up by this situation. So I'm just going to say I apologize for the behavior. And I'm sorry that's not that Sam and uh, Drag got kicked because of my behavior, basically. So I'm sorry. And that's all I'll say. And you can do what you wanted to do. I don't know. Wait. Uh, I don't think we have any other plans for this at all. What were, oh, we were going to watch Buntos hang out. Yeah. We, okay. We got the Bunto hang uh, uh, are Hello you sharing and welcome the audio to Bunch for that? Of Silent Dogfight, episode number 20, Shanny for Christ. Our special guest tonight is, of course, Shanny for Christ. I'm your host, Bunto. How you doing, all? Uh, as per usual, we'll open up the room to participants after the discussion. Thanks. Yeah, I don't uh, blame welcome you, Welcome to the Becky. show, Shanny. How you doing? I don't blame I'm you, Becky, wonderful. at all. God, Excellent. Let me give you a little backstory on our excellent guest. Uh, she's a Minnesota mother, a follower of Christ for three years now. She's very spiritual and, of course, a rabid gamer. Uh Go ahead and tell us just a little bit about the games that you do play, Shani. Um, well, I'm really into like classic gaming. Okay. Um, so I, I I I love I love the Kingdom Hearts series. Um, I just adore that. I'm love Final Fantasies. Um, but there's a newer game that I found that is probably one of the best games I think that has ever been made in existence. And that oh, was really? Grand Theft Auto V. Um, I just think it's a great storyline. The graphics are spectacular. I mean, the gameplay is just smooth as anything. And I just, I think it's a great game overall. Um, okay. are, are, these, are, these, are these games you play by yourself or with other people? I play them by myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know some games are like, you know, what's a Call of Duty and stuff? Do you play with them, you know, online? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of afraid of going online because, you know, I've done online games before. And it's just like, I'm nowhere compared to what they are. So I'm kind of just training myself up right. in order to go online. Sure. Um, yeah. So I don't oh, you know, well, that. some people like playing games just against a computer. You know, that's... <laughs> Yeah, there's that. I mean, I mean, I'm, I usually do the Final Fantasy, so it's kind of like, you know, basically one on one. You know, I, I like games that have a lot of story to them, I guess. OK, like what kind of games do you like, like fantasy games or war games or uh, strategy fa games? Fantasy RPGs are one of my biggest ones that I like. Okay, like wizardry or or Dungeons and Dragons or what type? No, 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 no. Just just like the Final Fantasy RPGs. Um, you know the you know trying to find treasure. Breath of yeah, treasure. I I, I enjoy Skyrim somewhat, but I I really don't really like that type of like bloody violence. Okay, violence, um, right. Yeah, I, I, I try to play, like, different games like Resident Evil and uh, Silent Hill, but I just, I can't seem to do it because it just scares me too much, so. Well, okay, well, let me ask you this. What about the really kiddie games like Super Mario Brothers and stuff? Have they ever, you ever found those attractive <laughs> or what? Well, I grew up on it, so, <laughs> you know, I mean, Super Mario Brother came out when I was, like, four or something. Right. So, I mean, I grew up on playing, you know, the Mario's and the Zelda. Oh, I love Zelda. All right. Uh, the Zelda series. And then, you know, then I started getting into the Pokemon series. And, you know, then I got into the Final Fantasy. I think the first Final Fantasy game I ever played was actually Final Fantasy VII. 
simply adore that one. Um, what about games like The Sims? You know, where you're like a person. What do you think of those games? I'm not too thrilled over them because. Mm, are they are like too sexy or what? No, 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 no. I, I just. I don't know. I just don't like building things for myself. I kind of like having the, you know, story kind of there for me. Right. Yeah. Instead of trying to make something do something, I guess. Uh, okay. It, in that game, what do they do? You make a character and then you just live that character? I, I think that's how Sim works. Um, like, I think, don't, don't some guys like make female characters and they like live as a female it's like yeah yeah right. yeah i mean if a fluff them bow i i i i i don't know i you know <laughs> I, I mean especially when in, in games you t especially as a female gamer you're kind of used to playing male characters right because there's not many games where you're female character so or the yeah oh well, the female par character doesn't have enough power well, yeah, they kind of limit the female characters a lot in that. And um, I, I think you, that... I was going to say, hon, uh, sorry to interrupt, but they have this thing I'll called Gamergate. Have you heard of that? <laughs> yes, dear. Oh, what? No, I'm oh, fine. Oh, you wanted to say something? No, I was just picking up the mic because oh. I the feeling of it. I have heard of that, but I've never really looked into Gamergate, actually. Okay. What this woman is saying is that in games today that there's too much exploitation of women. Like, you've seen the women, they have, like, tremendous bosoms, and they're very scantily clad. And then in some games, they actually, you know, put it to the woman sexually. I mean, what do you think of that? Do you think she has a point? Sometimes I do I think she has a point for that. She does have a very good point. They do, I think, over-sexualize the female right. characters. Um, you know, one of my favorite games actually is Final Fantasy X-2. And, the, you know, they're practically in bikinis in that game. Okay. I, I love the story, though, because it kind of has, like, a female, like, it's very, it's such a chick, chick game. All right. Um, Probably one of the only chick games you can find, really. But males hate that game. You know that absolutely. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Let's suppose this woman had her way, and then all those women were like covered up, and they were less sexy. Would that bother you? Would you say like, you know, come on, just leave the game alone? No, I really wouldn't care if that. I mean, you got you got. I, I don't play it, but you got Laura Croft, and she's she's right. pretty much. I'm not I'm very sexy. well. She's not that sexy. She's a little bit more conservative, though. Yeah, she's tough. yeah. So, I mean, I think basically they sexualize the women for the male appeal, okay, um, and not the female appeal. But I think it's actually gotten females now have thinking they have to dress like that in order to appeal to a men when they don't realize that a lot of men actually like modesty. Okay. Um, well, unless you're gay, then. Right. You know, <laughs> well, I like, I, you know, actually, <laughs> let me think. From my point of view, I do enjoy really sexy women. You know? Mm -hmm. So, but as far as, like, oh modesty. Oh okay, oh, games yes, are for escapism, Look at right? Bundo. I'm playing the game because I want to escape in the fantasy. So Absolutely. the women can't be alluring. You know what I mean? Like a renegade or exciting. I guess she could have like a big bosom and a totally perfect oh, body, right? Oh, for the okay. escapism. Yeah, I think that's true. yeah. That's true. Okay, but yeah, what I, I mean, wouldn't like to see in a game is like, you know, in Grand Theft uh -huh. Auto where you get to, because you know, have not? sex or blow away hookers no. or something like that. To me, that's like, God, well, he's got you know, game. a little over the top. I don't know why you need to kill He's got hook. so much game, man. Mr. Jonathan Green, sir. <laughs> Why are you trying to pull at my heartstrings like that? You just saying the si right words at the right way. I know. Right? Mm, 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 mm. Looking, looking oh, Sherry looking at John right now. Mm, John, ooh. We got a John Green situation where the women ooh. are just insane folks. 
Oh, God, we got an idiot oh, troll. Wow, we're going to have an asshole come in here and be a racist. Wow, you're an asshole. You're, yeah, you're blocked, bro. You're I'm sorry about that, John. Yeah. I don't want you to see stuff like that. That ain't allowed on my channel, dude. Black lives do matter. Yeah, that ain't fucking right, dude. You don't fucking do that to people, dude. Black lives it do fucking matter. triggers people and hurts yeah. them. And I wanted to destroy Vaughn last night. About the Black Lives Matter thing. D don't do that while Rev is sitting there. What? What? Anyway, I wanted to destroy Vaughn last night for going like all Black Lives Matter people or something. I don't know. But he was saying, I, like, we agreed on Antifa, definitely. Antifa's bad, dude. They're not cool. Like, they, they're anti-fascist, which is a good thing, okay? But, but George Soros pays for the people to loot and destroy shit, okay? It's not good. It's a communist front run by George Soros, pretty much. It's not good. But anyway, I digress, folks. That's not, we're not talking about that. I want to apologize to Jonathan Green and my, uh, anybody else that's in our audience that had to see that garbage. But we're the racists. You see, John, we're the racists. We want to protect people from that garbage, and we're the racists. No, we're not. We're just not. Uh, he, he's a Trump supporter. Oh, OK. Well, that's cool. Uh, it's cool that he's a Trump supporter. I'm saying it doesn't matter if you're a Trump supporter or not. I'm saying politically speaking, some of these movements aren't good. He's my boogeyman. No, no. Soros ain't a boogeyman. He actually does pay for very bad shit. He pays for terroristic type activities and then he sits there like a self-righteous sack of shit. And, and he says, you know, one day we'll have a system where it's all equal. Yeah, you could help that a lot, George, couldn't you? By donating large, huge portions of your salary to actual charities, not New World Order charities that they just go back into it. It's like a slush fund. Thank you, O Hamburgers. What? It's about the oh, okay. Monday. Yeah. Monday. All right. That's cool. Monday. But anyway, uh, yeah, I agree that Becky's got it. She, I think Shani could win for the presidency. And she could run the country well, actually. She's very, 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 very high IQ. I mean, super high IQ and super empathic. She's like the female Jesus. It's very true. What the fuck is she looking like? Huh? What, Zoe? What the fuck is she be looking like? I don't know. I'm not sure, Zoe. Sorry, Zoe. Zoe. Uh, I have to... Well, I mean, I would have technically... Becky would have to fight me for Shanny, right? But I, I'm not going to fight a lady. I'm not going to fight. Becky, it, Becky is like. Becky's our third, dude. Becky's our third. I Don't know. worry. We share her. Whoa. Okay. <sighs> We're going to share. Catch me outside. <laughs> yeah, you got to let Becky be the queen she is, all right? <laughs> You got to let Becky be the queen she is because you're going to have problems otherwise. <laughs> Back down. That's good. <laughs> We're just trying to make peace in the individual situation. Hit me, baby, one more time. Shanty sings that well. Her loneliness is killing her. Eh, yeah. She still believes. She still believes. Here you go. Put her in a game, right? <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, there's one scene in uh, game or Grand Theft Auto Five where, you know, I was like, you really have to follow this guy in a car, five, and you know, he's taking a hooker to a spot, and Damn. you can kill the hooker, but you know, you have to kill the man because it's a hit job, but. 
I don't care. I mean, okay, so her. what is the point of that? <sighs> Danny? I mean, what are the I, game designers I, after? Realism or just egregious know. violence? Uh, I honestly don't know. Do you they even care? Have or Do I care? Just, or do you just say it's just a game? I particularly don't care because it's just a game and it's part of the story. I mean, think about it. You're, you're thieves and, you know, you're hired to do these horrible crimes. I mean, you know, of course, you're going to go and see the seedy parts of humanity. I mean, you know, part of Grand Theft Auto 5 Thank is you. you have to Thank go you, John. The That's club, very you kind. Know, try Blow to away hookers, I guess. Well, not blow away the not blow away the hookers, you know, the strippers I'm talking about. Right, blow away the strippers. I, I, I mean, the aim of... Whoa, look what Maya just said. Recently in Kentucky, that black militant group got caught on camera saying they not only paid people to march, but also gave participant firearms to march with... Oh, my God. They're trying to start a war. And use no, uh, listen, it's George Soros working with Trump. They're working together and they're playing I, both ends of the fucking spectrum in this war. I, this helter skelter. I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't have agreed with you prior to June 1st of 2020. But I can see now that that Trump is no different and he's playing just a script. It's the same script, and he is not different from other individual presidents. He's the same because he said he would use the military on his own people. That's the worst violation of the Constitution possible. It's a war crime to use your own active military on your people. You can't do it. And then you have individuals then support the action of the president, which is not lawful nor constitutional, but they support it because they're sycophantic, disgusting scumbags that just want political clout, and they will lick Trump's nutsack now when it was never Trump. These assholes that are licking Trump's asshole now uh, were the same assholes that were saying, never Trump, never Trump. We're going to be with Ted Cruz or with, with some other individual that has absolutely no chance of winning. It's pathetic, and, and politics is the worst. There's nothing worse than politics. That's why Donald Trump is so good at it. I hate politics. I really do. That going into the strip bars for them to, you know, sleep with you. Right. And, and then you get their phone number and then, yeah. Okay. So there's some all those pictures. Yeah. strategy there. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Let's suppose, like, you know, you went to church or maybe you turn on your TV to the religious channel and... Mm -hmm. You know the wow. No, I haven't voted. I haven't voted since the first time Obama ran. I refuse to vote. Fuck, fuck this stupid fucking system. I ain't voting. I'm not participating in it. I don't care about who, 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 who is running. I don't care. They all working in the same fucking system. They all the fucking same. They say they're different, but they're really not. Democrats and Republicans are basically two different sides of the same fucking coin. They all working together. Why do you think they ain't putting all the stimulus money out right now? Because they don't want to put the money out, so they're going to blame the Democrats, and the Democrats are going to blame the Republicans, and it's going to go back and forth to delay time. And you're going to be led to believe, oh, look, it's they're actually going to, you know, help us. The, the Democrats love us. No, the Republicans love us. No, none of the motherfuckers love you. They don't want to give you no goddamn money they don't want to see you alive they want to see you the opposite well it's it's what you call a corruptified individual situation with the government it's a corruptified situation bigly do you understand folks we got a bigly corruptified situation with this individual in trump trump is a corrupt individual he was not before but i'm telling you he took the mantle of antichrist on six twenty uh, uh, a six one 6 1 2020. He took the mantle of Antichrist. It's passed on to Trump now. He's a demon. He's satanic. Look at him. His eyes are red now. Did you notice that? His fucking eyes are red, folks. He is not of God anymore. He took on the mantle of Antichrist. Hugely, bigly. That's right, Gary's landlord. You get what I'm saying? Folks. Folks. 
The guy is fully satanic now. His eyes are red. His skin is like a face mask. He's probably a reptile now. They chipped him, too. I think he's a fucking chipped reptile. <laughs> Daleks. Like, I imagine Doctor Who shit with Trump now. Kentucky is an open carry state? I would have to check that. I don't, I'm not sure. Presidents probably don't sleep well. They shouldn't. Ha! <laughs> I Trump is pretty close to Satan himself, yeah. Shanny calls him Lucifer. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Dave. Yeah, we're still going, Dave. I would have to check that. Hey, Dave. Trump was always weird looking to be fair, folks. Well, I guess that's fair, Becky, yeah. I guess that's fair, but I'm telling you, like, his eyes used to at least actually be blue. I would believe Trump is a reptoid. His speech cadence is far too much like an alien just learning the English language. You know, you got something. What's convincing me, John, is the fact that they can't even move right anymore. They do this weird fucking Marilyn Manson video type walk now. Like, it's like this, folks. Oh, like, I don't know what's going on. I think they're getting chipped, maybe. My dad said Trump is the Antichrist. He took the mantle. Barack Obama was an Antichrist, too, who mocked the Bible and all that shit. I saw some of this while I was on break at work. I'm at home now after shopping for some tea. That's cool. Yeah, you're welcome here all the time, Dave. You're welcome here whenever you want to come in, Dave. Peace be upon you, brother in Christ, David. Uh, by black militant doesn't mean they're black supremacists. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I'm ready to see the dragons in the sky. That's going to happen, Becky. I can't keep up and whatnot. <laughs> There's too much, Becky. Or is this a bad thing? Well, the dragons... I think it depends on your spiritual stance, Becky. Like, if you're a good person, they're going to be okay with you. But I, th you're prettier. I want to kiss you really hard. You got that, folks? It's my heart. Folks! Oh, we have an individual. Oh, Carl, Marx. Carl Marx, folks. I don't know. We're going to. Yeah, the individual situation in this room is that you must come on camera because you might porn bomb. So we're going to go with this individual. <laughs> uh, that was a Hollywood style kiss, kind of. Okay. It's a head, folks. All right. You're an individual. All right. I have a question. Yes, folks, yes. Uh, I have a question about uh, G-Man. Uh, G-Man say uh, you uh, take away a house from him because of a uh, Dragonaut tell you lie about him. Is this true or you take away a house for a different reason? No, that's partly true. Because of only because Dragonaut tell you lie? Well, yes. What, yes. Lie, Dragnaut, what lie Dragnaut told you? You know what? She has I'm over it. right. Shani had she had the reins of stuff because I was still going through wet brain. So it's a good thing to discuss it with with her. Do you know what I mean? But for most part, it's problem between Shani and Gary. Not problem between Dragnot. This drag. I think Gary say big problem for say all because of Dragnot problem, but have nothing to do with Dragnot. I think problem between Shani and Gary take money and lie and steal and he lose house big deal happen forget about it he need to get over it stop blaming everybody big problem for G man he blame everybody for a problem Shani do very good thing for him you do very good thing give him nice things he lie he steal he lose it if he, he repent he he ask for forgiveness very good but not to blame on Dragnaut not fair okay yeah that's fair enough Okay, I, then. I, thank you. Yes, yeah. go ahead. 
Yeah, I and one once again, like you're a jubilee stuff for the Jews, and 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 uh, you know, it's all peoples actually, because Christ is Messiah and He saved the world. So, it's the year of jubilee. So I'm setting everybody free. I forgive everybody for all the bullshit. You know, I'm fine. Uh, Very good. Right, and yeah, this is this was a nice thing you did in here. So bless you. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just, I'm done answering these questions about the house. It's been three years, almost three years. Yeah, that's like I can't. I'm done. Yeah. My brain has has been interrogated enough over this scenario. And I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's kind of like, it's kind of like talking about evolution. It's like, I'm not talking about evolution. Right. I'm not going to talk about it. I don't care. Oh, look, Dabu. Yeah, they're they're talking about this event. Wh where did this happen? I saw it earlier, but it left my mind. There was some some kind of thing with black supremacist groups, uh, allegedly. They may not be black supremacist groups, but there is this is the problem. Okay. This is the problem. You have got so many different groups now within these, you want to call it the rebel forces? Okay. This is in my book, too. It's fucking insane. You could call it the resistance. That's what it is in my book. Okay. It's a red fist. That's my the logo for the resistance in my book is a red fist. Anyway, whatever. The fact is, is that you have African-American individuals, black people that are being abused by the system. And it's just clear. <sighs> yeah, that's probably a good thing to do. Anyway, look, the, the point is I'm losing the point at this point. I'm just I'm I keep talking over stuff in my head about how the situation how it is in the country and it's very it's toxic. It's very bad in the country because the racial stuff is so clear. Like Africa these black people are being treated differently and it's clear. It's worse than <laughs> it's bad. It's real bad guys. It's not good. Why do we still have monkeys? Yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm not, I don't agree with evolution. That's just me. But I, if there is evolution, it just, it, hey, Cookie, cool. I, I pray your doctor visit was good. Uh, yeah, I'm done. I don't have anything. We're going to watch this, right? Yeah. We're going to keep watching? Okay. Individual. The uh, pastor's there railing against games. You say amen along with that, or you just say the guy's out of step with the times? You know, I've gone back and forth with that okay. myself. I don't really listen to pastors and what they have to say because I read the Bible personally for myself right. and apply it to my life. But, you know, I think of it this way. I'm pretty sure the, Israeli, the Israelites they had war games and stuff like that where they, you know, pretend they're going to war and, you know, just okay. yeah. I mean, I think of it that way. It's just a way. I mean, to me, I look at games as a story unfolding itself. You know, I don't look right. at it as me doing that stuff. Something affecting society. Like yeah. um, a lot of, you know, you've heard people say that the reason we have so much violence is because of video games. Remember that one, Tipper Gore and all those? Yeah, videos. she's an idiot. Yeah, I know. All the, anyway, the nanny state, right? It was just going out. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, I don't think that's the reason they're violence. I think the right. reason they're violence is because, you know, we're people living, are Yeah, people are violent and our state of being right now is becoming more apathetic to people. Mm, I agree to that okay, well, statement, and, and it's gotten we'll worse since I've made this on. video right, five years this? ago. You are a notable vlogger in our community and on YouTube. How many shows do you do a month on YouTube? I do about 
15 to 20. All right. A month. Yeah. I mean, like, how, many, how many subscribers do you think you have? Or how many do you have? I think last time I count was 231. Oh, all right. And um, commenters always commenting on your videos? <sighs> oh. oh, a lot of them. There is a Mr. David Weiser individual in the house. Oh, okay, David Weiser. Hello, Mr. David. Hello there. Yeah, actually, it's David Anthony because uh, I don't want to get confused with my brother, so he gets to use the Weiser name. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I guess that. You mean has a hard enough time getting that straight? All right, brother. Gotcha. Okay. I never have a problem with that, but I guess it's because I know both you brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Are you and your brother actually getting along finally? Are you? Uh, what it is, it's kind of a. Kind of a loose truce. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna let God handle it. All right, good. There's a lot of issues. We're just we're just not gonna go there. Yeah. Because it, it will just it will just be horrible. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense, bro. Yeah, it does. And there's there's certain people like like I, even if we didn't have the COVID thing, I don't think I could go go and actually physically see him. Yeah. Because then there's other people I'd have to deal with that I don't want to deal with. Yeah, I totally understand all that. Well, just welcome. Are we going to watch this with him in the room? Or? Yes, sir. What's going all right. on? Well, yeah, I, I don't want to be on camera because I'm eating, and I don't want to do that. And okay. I thought what Vaughn did was gross. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You eat, enjoy. Oh, my God, David. What was wrong with Vaughn last night? Vaughn, Vaughn has got problems, man. I mean, we all know. Yeah, but why does he always have to be so triggered in my rooms? But when he in G Man, he's behaved. Yeah. Well, G Man just kicks know. everything. I don't know. He, uh, I think that's, I do. That's an interesting question. That's I a, think I do know why because I'm pretty sure G Man. If Vaughn says to him, "Look, G Man, you got to kick that guy. It's a hater. He just does it." Like we're not willing to just like stifle people's free speech, Dave. You know what I mean? Everybody's it's, different. Like. You got you guys do some stuff that trigger me. I I I'm just a trigger queen, and it's completely unintentional. If I, if I can use that word, I know it's overused. No, it's fine because I have to totally acknowledge that some of my behavior's been shitty recently, and I want to just repent of it. Not excuse me, sorry, that's indigestion. Uh, I just want to repent of all of it and just say to you, and I, I got to go down my channel and the fucking videos that are like, oh, blah, 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 David Weiser, if whatever, wait, you're not Weiser I anymore. I don't care about that stuff. I but, do. Uh, but you know, anyway, I, um, you know, what, what I, what I am concerned with is this Metatron and this oh, yeah. stuff. You can't Why? possibly believe that's real. Why? Well, for one, uh, angels of the Lord don't possess people. That's not possession. Avatar. Not possession. Well, it yeah. sounds like it to me. But how 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 does it sound like possession? Because uh, this this uh, what is this this angel that of Elijah or whatever you said it was? Is, well, uh, what if I told you there? Well, Elijah was caught up in the whirlwind, right. David. What makes you think he can't come back reverse? But he's not going to come back to America. He's going to come back to Jerusalem. Well, that ha that event has not happened yet. No, has it? And Elijah is a man. No, Elijah doesn't necessarily have to be a man at all. Elijah came back this time as a female, and it's the last time Elijah's coming back to the earth before the fucking elements burn like fire. I wanted a titties and an ass because, ah! you know, in heaven I'm actually a female. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, because at that time, at that time, David, when I came back as the males twice, you know, Elijah and John the Baptist, they wouldn't listen to women. My cat. So I to had to come back as a man and have that thing between my legs. Fuck. Anyway. Yeah, and and, and, and yeah, and, and the I, sexual I stuff. I, I I can't handle that very well. But but here's the thing. Yeah. This time I could come back as my natural, beautiful form, as I am now. This beautiful angelic character. I don't believe any of that. And, <laughs> I don't believe any of that and, and 
so since I came back, and I, I could tell you how I came back too. Pretty actually interesting story. Yeah. Um. But when I came back, I just wanted to be a female. Females are now heard, and the fact that I could, you know, be here on the earth with Metatron and uh, <laughs> engage in some, you know. Yeah, see, that's you know, people, reincarnation. Yeah. It's not reincarnation. Well, people are thinking that you, people are thinking and are you Jewish? Uh, are we Jewish? I'm from the kingdom of God. I am not so, Jewish. No, then. That's a good answer, though. Why do you have to be Jewish to be an archangel? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that oh. <coughs> Israel will only accept a Jewish prophet. I, I I tend to agree with that. But you know what, David? They're so liberal these days in Israel. You don't... It, who knows? I don't uh, know. It's, it sounds nuts to me. Sorry. I know. That's okay. And that's why I don't hold it against brothers at all. That's why every time I see somebody trying to ask a fellow brother about this thing that's just spiritually true... Uh, I tell them to please leave the individuals alone. They will not be you know, and, uh, what brother and the Vagisil stuff and all that. Oh yeah, that was just dude, trolling. Come on, man. Yeah, that was trolling, dude. We can't. Oh, have you want to use the G-man term? Okay. It's trolling. It's not lying. It's not. It's not uh, saying bad stuff about people. It's just trolling. I didn't lie about anybody, David. No, I'm just saying that's how G-Man says it. Well, I... I he's caught in a lie or something like that, he'll say... What, about, what, what, bothered, <laughs> David, what bothered you about the Vagisil video, bro? Oh, it's just, oh, it's freaking nasty, man. Nasty? Okay. Yeah, well, nasty. That, does, that doesn't belong on a Christian channel, man. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, you can be yeah, a all fair... That stuff, all that Seth stuff, you, you know, you can't have that on a Christian channel. That's just, Come on, man. You know better than that. You can. Oh, oh, if you can't, can you say it in church? Why? Why would what? Can you go to? Can you go in the middle of a church service and say all those things you said? What? What church? Any church? Any any church? Any church that practices sure. Christianity? Sure, there are. Whether <laughs> Baptist, Methodist, Evangelical, yeah, there are churches that would that would be acceptable because they're not uptight about uh, cussing and shit. I mean, they don't even like that. I mean, but you're you're talking about you know pleasuring your wife and very descriptive yeah. and and yeah. you know ways that really kind of kind of offends everybody uh lots of people thought it was hilarious actually uh well i'm not one of them well i don't care that's my content i can do that so with, since we're past that individual situation hey shanny what do you want to do here folks what do you want to do shanny do you want to <laughs> well if we want to get into some uh you know black hebrew israelite theology and and get some presented truth in me actually being an israelite i could throw that fucking shit down on you because i'm i'm irish which means according to black hebrew israelite theology i am a benjamite and what was elijah a, a benjamite wasn't he yes i'm irish i i'm a benjamite according to Black Hebrew Israelite theology. So thank you very much. Yeah. I'll throw hey, down. How does, how, does, how does Black Hebrew Israelites accept people from Ireland? Because we're part of the tribes. No, they no, you're yeah. right. You're not you're not part of anything anything of Israel, according to them. According but, to them, you're an Edomite. The the Irish not the Irish. Well, I'm talking about the black Hebrew Israelites. Irish if you're not Irish, if you're not brown or black. It doesn't matter, dude. Then you're you're no good. Well, it doesn't matter, dude. No, but that's not always the well, theme. It doesn't matter to me because I know they're full of crap. But yeah, I know, me too. But I I'm telling you, bro, that that's not the case with all Black Hebrew Israelites. Some of them believe that there are Caucasian and and Red Man and Yellow Man that are 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 Israel too. Uh, well, the the actual descendants of of uh, Jacob is actually yeah. already there. Right. No, I understand what you mean. Yeah. 
what I but what I'm saying is not all black Hebrew Israelites believe that there's only black Jews. That not all of them believe that. Okay, I can accept that. Right. But um they delegitimize the the Jews that are over there, for one, they mostly look Caucasian. And because of the of the uh what they call that the Hezekonzi Jew, I think is what it was. I should they actually actually they were converts that lived like around eastern, you know, eastern Russia yeah. and all that. And they converted. That, yeah. But what happened was when they converted, they intermingled with that people who were actually of Jewish descent. So right. the, the people who are who are alive now that are from that, yeah, they are actual physical Jews. Yeah, but see, because they have it on one side of their family. Yeah, the Ashkenazim Jews is an interesting thing, but this is where like white supremacist asshole Christians like to come in and try and make something out of fake Jews. They're not fake Jews because if you look in the scripture, the name the name of a tribe is Ashkenaz. They are of a tribe, but the, but it's true. Never heard of that tribe. I've, it's in the Bible. Look it up. Thirteen tribes. But it's there. Look it up. It, it's Ash, it, it, just look it up. It's a name in the Bible. Ashkenaz. A -Ash well, all thirteen tribes are listed in the Bible by name, and I never well, heard of, of course them. They are. Yeah, of course they are. It might not be a tribe. I might not be accurate in saying it's a tribe, but it is one. It is in of the families of Israel. Ashkenaz. But anyway, the point is. That you're right. Many of those that exist today are converts in Eastern Europe, and most of them are satanic Kabbalists. They're they're not fucking like Bible Torah Jews. They're not that. They're they're satanic Luciferian in most cases and black magic Jews. Does they're literally the synagogue of Satan? Okay, they don't worship Yahweh. They worship the. the are you talking about Zionism? Well, there's that too. That's a different. I mean, that, that's a free Masonic portion of the Jewish uh, people. That's correct. That's absolutely true. I love talking about David knows the shit about this stuff. It's very good. Okay. I know some things. I'm... You're good. I've talked to you enough about that. You know some stuff. So, but more so, I was talking about uh, that they're they're disciples of Baal Shem Tov. Look that name up. It's B A A L, which is a false god in the bible and you have jews following this man he's the founder of hasidism hasidic jews he's the founder Baal shim tov this guy is a satanist okay he's a satanist and he brought i've heard the term hasidic jew what, what is that yeah it's the it's the jews with the jerry curls that they got up in the front in the back and they they got their about orthodox. You talking about the orthodox? Yeah, or, yeah, you could say orthodox. Yeah, the got the men kind of wear a hat. So why, what? What? Okay, what's wrong with them? Well, they're. I mean, they're. Well, they're extremely racist to start with. I mean, are they? Are they orthodox or not? Yeah, you. Yeah, so they're, they're actual Jews. They are actual Jews, right? Well, I don't think they. I think it's no. They're Hasidics, man. The Hasidic doctrine. Okay, is, that confuses me. Yeah, his how, can, how can they be like? How can they be like all into like, um, basically what we would call fundamentalist? Yeah, well, how they, can they be all into that and not and not be real Jews. Exactly, I totally agree with you because because here's what it is, David. They don't have a temple to go to, so their their religion is broken. The only way that they can atone for their sins, they're doing things that are not even biblical for their sins. They have to be going to the temple. They have to be going to the temple in Jerusalem to make tribute to to Yahweh for their for their transgressions through the sacrifice of grain. They and go to temple, they go to temple like every every week now. Yeah, but that's not going to the temple, David. They can't make atonement. Every Jew needs to be at the temple for the day of atonement to make atonement for their sins, and they're not doing it. There's no covering, and there's no temple. So they have taken these years, these thousands of years since Christ, because he cut it off. <laughs> He cut it. So how do they how do they explain that to their followers? Exactly, they can't. So they go to these Hasidic rabbis with things like the Talmud and the Kabbalah and all of this garbage dross that's not the Torah. And and Moses would absolutely rebuke every single Hasidic Jew on the planet. He would say, "You're of Satan. You're of Baal. Don't you you know you're going after Balaam again? Don't you see that? 
but they don't. They have these satanic rabbis that, no, I'm preaching. They, 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 I'm sorry. I'm getting a little too loud, probably. They have these satanic rabbis that have a long fingernail cut a kid's foreskin off, and then they suck the dick of the little babe. It's the most disgusting shit I've ever seen in my life. And you want to talk about people get all outraged about circumcision. That's fine. But I'm, you want to go, you want to talk about the most disgusting practice on the planet? Can you think of anything more repulsive and disgusting, David? Not much. It's repulsive. They're satanic. Yeah. They drink blood. Okay. Like they literally have become Balaam's followers. People, they, but people aren't doing that now, are they? I think they got arrested. Like they, <laughs> there was such a huge thing about AIDS and disease. And no, all I mean, when you, say, when you say they do that, what, are, you, are you saying that they remove the foreskin and then put the foreskin in their mouth? Yes. It's in their mouth. At the time that they they are not actually putting their mouth down there to the genitals to the genitals of the baby. Yes, oh, they actually they actually put their mouth on the genitals. On the genitals of the oh, baby that is freaking just, nasty, man. to suck the blood out. That's yeah, nasty. I, I have seen it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's absolutely the most repulsive thing you could ever think of. But but I think it's outlawed everywhere now because it was just a it was a specific well, sex. That's not very hygienic. It's disgusting, and the and the rabbis the rabbis satanically drinking the kid's blood by sucking the fucking blood off of the baby's uh, member. This is the most repulsive satanic garbage I've ever heard. And these people are supposed to be of Israel, David. They're drinking blood. They're fucking. It's the most repulsive shit ever. Okay, but I'm pretty sure they don't do it anymore because it was outlawed everywhere, Dave. Well, okay, uh, yeah, that is freaking horrible. But I, and I'm sure that there's other groups. That that try to claim to be a certain thing, and they and they're actually just as horrible. Absolutely, I mean, you got, it's not it's not restricted to this to just them. I mean, no, when, that probably Satan could cover a multitude of things. Absolutely, that's a hundred percent accurate and correct, David. That the, the, these people that come out and say it's all the Jews are insane. Okay, in most cases they're white supremacists, and they love Hitler, and they love the Holocaust, and they make jokes about the Holocaust. These people are fucking disgusting. It didn't even happen. They, some of them completely deny the Holocaust. That's true, and they're insane. They're insane. There's there's more proof of the Holocaust than, oh, my God, so much stuff in history. You know? It's not <laughs> – anyway, it, some of these people are just mentally ill, and I actually do pray for them, David. And I think we need to, as the church, to pray for a lot of these people that are so deceived, David, you know? Ugh. I, I I hope Dave's okay. I'm getting hungry. I am. I only had some piece bagel bites today and like a couple Doritos. Oh, I now froze. Oh my god! And look at Maya dropping some skills down, dude. She is woke. Infection doing it that way in some countries it's outlawed. I think it is outlawed in some states, including New York, New York, because I think I think this became a big issue with Why this would one. That even need to be outlawed in some states. It should be outlawed. It should be just understood across the board. I agree, but but what I'm saying is it was it became an issue in New York because it was a specific sect of Hasidism that was doing it. And they said, stop, because it's disgusting, unhygienic. You can spread AIDS and hepatitis. These rabbis aren't fucking chaste individuals. There's a lot of crazy stuff, you know, that people use religion to get away with. I mean. Yeah, it's insane, David. It I is. mean, like like parents like parents who refuse to take their kids to see the doctor because they believe that prayer is going to heal, heal their kid. Yeah, I don't believe and then their kid And their kid gets so sick that, that, that some of them actually die. Yeah, I'm not down with that either. I mean, there's like, and you could go, you can go to some like really remote place in the country that still exists, like say, say the swamps of Louisiana or someplace where hardly anybody ever goes. And you could, you could see stuff going on there that you would thought could ever happen today. Yeah, definitely. But, but to me, to me, David's just disturbing because 
I don't know about you, man, but like I just look at the world and it makes me fucking shudder. Like, are are you still with Trump, my bro? No. Yeah, I never be- really was. I oh, never, you never were with him. Okay. I never really. I mean, I wasn't against him either. I mean, I, right. I like because okay, if, if you're talking about the last presidential election, I yeah. couldn't vote for either one of them. I understand that. I I went for Trump because I felt something, but it turned out to be bullshit. Well, <laughs> well I mean, I'm, I don't know about the the spiritual stuff you were talking about, but my issue with him was that that he, you know, he 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 cheats in business quite a lot. And yeah, you're nobody, right. Nobody nobody cared, and 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 he completely lost me when he was like trying to get nominated. And he and he said and people to this day still defend it, which is blows me away. Um, that he said that he gave everybody that was running against him and trying to trying to be known. He said he gave everybody money, including the Democrats, including Hillary Clinton. And when he gives people money, they're supposed to do what he says. Hmm. That's freaking bribery. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, I immediately saw it, but when I but when I would tell a Trump supporter that, he was, oh no no, it's only bribery if he's the one getting the money. That's like that's the that's the same kind of mentality as like a, you, if a drug deal goes down. You only no, gonna, you're only going to arrest the guy buying it. Yeah, <laughs> and you know you know the truth of the matter, David. Uh, Trump was given huge passes by my individuals like myself and others that support him, like Alex Jones, who's a coward still. Alex is a fucking coward. He will not say that this man is a fucking tyrant because he said he would use his military I like to do it sometimes. But I don't, I don't, I ha, I have to like really look at what he says with a grain of salt. There's, of there's, there's some things he says that, you know, I go, oh, let me take a second look at that, you know? Exactly. But, but he's like, he's been, it, most of it's hype. Most of it's hype, hyperbole. Yeah, it's true. And it's to, it's to sell, it's to sell DVDs and fucking food and, 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 and health products and fucking yeah. store food and all that. Yeah, we, yeah, about, about every, every 10 minutes he's trying to, uh, hawk some crap that he's got going on yeah it's very true and it's it, it's become a business and it's it's about the business folks now folks it's no longer about freedom it's about it's about products folks. but i i look i look at the world around us man and everybody's freaking lying to us man everybody yeah everybody everybody every, everybody in every position of authority that at least at, on some level they're lying to us and, and then they point their fingers at each other and say, look, that person's lying. Well, yeah, so are you. So are you, bro. Exactly. And, and it's like, okay, like this, like this recent VP uh, pick. Like, she she's going to, like, champion Joe Biden uh, for, you know, on, on things about race and stuff like that. But yet, yeah. if you go back in his, you know, in his, not even that far back, if you go back in his past, you'll, you will, here are some of the most racist crap ever. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's like just recently, just recently, he said that he says something. Well, how do you, how do you word it? He goes, he goes. Uh, um, if you poor have people, to, poor people are just as good as white people. As white people, what the? So in other words, in other words, he he sees white people as rich and black people as poor. Well, it's Bernie, like, yeah. It's Bernie, like, go ahead. You know, it's like, like like the guy's got Alzheimer's or something. Yeah. But he does, it, Bernie Sanders does the fun, same fucking thing. But that's where Bernie lost me. Because I would I would have been a Bernie bro if he was just like a guy with a brain. He, he said, David, that not one white person on the planet can fucking uh, 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 understand the plight of a black person... Because there's no such thing as, as as a poor white person, David. I'm like, what? Well, well, I I, I don't know if I can go there. I mean, that's just nonsensical, dude. The, the the thing is that it's that for most black people, being poor and being black is way worse than being white and being poor. <laughs> yeah, I could agree. Uh, certainly, I I could I could agree. I could. Well, I, I mean, I under I understand at least academically i understand why they're pissed sure me too i mean i understand it yeah me too but tearing the country down tearing tearing the country up uh you know i i don't think that's gonna do any good i don't well, think no, that's- yeah i think everybody agrees except if you're fucking george soros and he's making money off of the looting by by 
Well, he's not making money on the looting. I mean, that's a bad way of putting it. He, he's putting his money into the looting, and he's getting his reaction that he wants of order up cow of the fucking New World Order. That's what he's doing. Uh, if people can't can't see that and understand it, that's it, it, like, come on, Antifa is fucking fake as a three dollar bill. They're not. They are a fucking front group for Soros to do shitty shit. Here, here's the thing, too. You think you think when Jesus comes back, he's gonna give a crap about any of that? Hot no. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, like, well, I, I was I was treated this way because of my race, and I, and some other race will say I'm treated this way because of my race, and you know, it's like Jesus is not gonna care about any of that stuff. No, he was persecuted for everybody's sake. It doesn't matter if you're friggin' white or black. It, or won't, white. it won't even be. It won't even be brought up. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> Not at all. There's a bigger worry right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're standing before Jesus, there's there's a bigger issue on the table. Yeah. Than, you're right. Than race. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm dropping truth bombs, and Dave is in on the truth bombs. What? No, I'm good. I'm fine. So, yeah, Dave, you're 100% right. How do you think about Israel right now bombing the shit out of Gaza, dude? My God. I, I don't know anything about it. I haven't watched the news about any of that stuff. It's horrible, brother. Bombing like, Gaza. Now, is that is that where is that where the Palestinians are living? Yes. Why are they bombing it? That's a great question, Dave. Well, I mean, what <laughs> happened? It's disgusting. Israel has these rockets and bombs and everything else. And, and 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 these little Israeli, or excuse me, these little Palestinian kids are running up with rocks, man. It, give me a break. Israel is disgusting. I mean, I I I love Israel because I believe they have a right to exist. I don't well, want the Palestinians. The Palestinians actually want their own state. Yeah, I always have. Yeah, they should get it. There's no reason why they can't get it. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's it's a it's a rough issue, man. It's like it's bad. Well, no. Well, okay. Let's hypothetical. Let's say let's say we can give them give them the um give them their state, but they they want Jerusalem. Yeah. Both sides want Jerusalem. It's it's a holy site to both face, and they and yeah. they're not going and they're not going to give it up in any negotiation. So there's no way. There's no there's no way to to resolve this. One side I, has, has to be the loser. I agree with you. And, and, but the way that they're they're going to deal with it is basically you're going to have this world leader. It could be Trump. I don't know. It, it might. Think, it, I don't uh -huh. think, I don't think so. You don't think so? Well, I don't know. Everybody thinks, thinks I'm crazy for this anyway, but yeah, uh, I was already told who it was going to be. Yeah, I thought I was too, but I, I don't I still say it's going to be Obama. I got, I, got, I got to go with what God told me. I got to. I don't know how it's going to happen. Gaddafi? In fact, he was. In fact, he was in the in the uh, Democratic National Convention giving a speech, I believe, just just like a day ago. Or so. Who? Bill Clinton. Oh, BC. That's right. I heard you talking about that, and you were making some good points. Why, Dave? But see, I'm starting to think, David, that every president has the mantle of Antichrist. Well, okay, the vision the vision I had back in 2003 oh. was I had this, I, I was dreaming and it felt real, but there's no way it could be because it, some of it was pretty absurd. But I dreamed that I was in this gigantic, like, board game. And the object of the game was to run around the game and try to get, you know, try to get things, try to make money, like a Monopoly. And, uh, in the dream, I wasn't doing bad, but I wasn't doing great. You know, I was doing okay. And all the pieces of the, of the board game, and it was like a life-size game where, like, you could actually stand on the game board itself. And the, and the pieces in the game were, like, dried with red kerosene, like, streaked with dried with it. So it's very flammable. And well, as I was playing, I was pulled up. I was pulled up out of the game, and I, and I was, like, in heaven. God, I've had dreams like that, Dave. That's and wow. I could look down, and I looked down, and I could see this real vast, green, healthy, just magnificent-looking estate. And this is the person who was winning the game. And I knew that. I intuitively knew that. That, that, that whoever was the owner of that estate was winning the game. Wow. And I looked down, 
and I could see uh, Bill Clinton sitting on what looked like a director's chair, like a movie director's chair, and right. sitting with another man that I, I couldn't know who it is. It, it almost looked like kind of like a portly fella, a little bit balding. Yeah. I have been Ariel Sharon, but he's dead now. Right. Um, so that's what I thought it probably was. But he kind of put me in mind of Alfred Hitchcock a little bit. Okay. So so I don't know. I don't that's know interesting, that. Dave. But, but between the two chairs, so they were sitting side by side on this tape, and between the two chairs was this document, and it was folded over like a burrito and sealed all over around the side. Like, uh -huh. like and it was, and, and I knew I could see that how what it was written is written in human blood. And wow. the, the pages were stuck together because of the human blood. And there was some sort of document, some kind of agreement. Wow. And and then I saw Bill Clinton look up at heaven and his face became ashen. Just like all the color left. It, it was like he was, it looked like ash. Wow. And there were black lines going up through his face like lightning, like electricity. Ooh. What? He's like looking at him, going, ah, yeah, like angry. All that. And when I seen that, I there was on my on on my side was this person that looked like Jesus Christ. Yes, like like Hollywood Jesus Christ. Right. And I asked, I said, "Is this man going to become the Antichrist?" And then this Jesus, he he tried. He he said, like he said something. I couldn't quite understand it, and. Then he tried to say my name, and he and he guessed wrong. Then he oh. tried to get, he guessed like two or three times, and he and he kept not guessing my name right. And I was like, well, "I'm David, don't you know me?" And then he and then he looks away like he's, and he goes, I, "I'm sorry, I don't get anything." And I turned, I turned, I was walking away. I, said, I can't believe this. And then I woke up. Wow. And it wasn't Jesus. I I mean, it it was it was the false prophet. Wow, that and I, and I had I had to get prayer. I had I had to study and get prayer and and have people interpret the dream for me and they and they and they asked me he said Did, was there any wounds in his hands? I said no. It's what he looked like. Well, he's like like the movies. Like wow. the mill Jesus. And they said that's not Jesus. That was Sananda. That's not Jesus. Yeah, that's and, that. And that's he said they said there's a false prophet. Hello. The false prophet is going to impersonate Jesus. Don't well, interrupt. Fact, false prophet is going to be Thank so you. great if impersonating Jesus, he's yeah. actually going to have the power to go up into heaven. Yeah. Well, David, I want to just say to you that that's absolute. Thank you for that. So that's I love hearing stuff like that. And uh, was it? Would you say that your dream was around the same time that Bill Clinton had uh, signed in uh, the uh, that one accord for Israel? Well, it was two thousand two, not two thousand three. Okay. It was 2002. It was April 2002 when I received that received that dream, and it was exactly 20 years after I had I had a vision in 1982 where I was standing before the tree of life. Wow. See, these are testimonies. Hey, David, if you get, to, I mean, if you're feeling the spirit, my brother, you should do videos on each testimony and dream you have, dude. It'll be great. Oh, I, you know, the, the pearl before swine thing kind of comes. I right. know. I feel, oh, dude, I feel you so much. But, Dave. You know, I, kid, but, you know I, I did this, I, you know, I, I learned a horrible or not. Well, it felt horrible, but I learned a valuable lesson. Uh, the last time, because I was putting I was putting this all out there about Bill Clinton and all that. And then when it didn't happen, because I thought, well, Hillary, like in 2008, Hillary, I said, well, Hillary might get it, you know. Right. Again, again in 2016 and then it didn't happen again uh and then like look like it's like people kind of like hey is she gonna run is she is she gonna be or vp pick or all that well whatever it is whatever's going on it's behind the scenes and then anyway according to the dream i don't get we don't get to know who it is until after the rapture anyway yeah i i, th I think that i think that's accurate uh it's hard it's so hard dave the timing shit. You know what I mean, bro? It's tough. Well, the reason why it's so hard is because of the inaccuracies of the way they, they could record dates. It's yeah. like the closest date we could come to, uh, you know, with the star of Bethlehem is, you know, within a, within a group of like two or three years. Right. Because, you, know, you have to go by astronomical uh, charts and stuff. And they, and they put what, what's possible according to 
uh, you know, astronomy and, and the, where the prophecies are written, um, is that it could be, you know, however Jupiter and all these other stars were lined up, plants were lined up. Um, like say, as, it could have been as early as 7 BC when Jesus was born. Right. And as late as 4 BC. Hey, Dave, I really like this concept because have you seen the documentary about the star Bethlehem? No, I don't think I have. Yeah, you need to see that. You would love it. Do you know when they pegged his birthday for? Probably 5 or 6 BC. It, I oh, believe geez. it was. But get the date, David. September 11th, 4 BC. You're kidding. That's about right. Can you believe that they did I, one of the they did if, one of the biggest? If you go, by, by, if you go by by the by Peter by Peter and and by Barnabas because Barnabas is is as uh, apocryphal. But uh, I've read I've read the uh, the Epistle of Barnabas and I can find nothing wrong with it. It it seems it's a wonderful book. Right. It explains a lot of stuff. It explains a lot of stuff. Yeah, you're and, talking. Uh, they, they both Barnabas and Peter said yeah. that Jesus will return. Two thousand years, two thousand years after after he rose up, right? Exactly, you know, two thousand said, said in two days, and then a thousand years is two days. That's so if we, if we could pinpoint. Let's let's say let's say hypothetically, it's six. He was born in six BC, right? He was, his, when he was thirty three, that puts that puts the date of his death and and resurrect crucifixion and resurrection, um, thirty three years after that, right? Which would which would be around like 28 oh wow 28 ad add 2000 years to that you get 2028 20, minus seven years for the tribulation you got 2021 right well i would recommend the like you're mentioning the non-canonical books so if you you should get your hands on one of these david it's called just look it up the sefer okay Zephyr? the okay. set e-p-h-e-r that's right it's got everything it's got jubilees it's got first and second or third jubilees however many jubilees there are it's it's got enoch enoch it's got uh barnabas yeah we're oh, gonna read this gracious yeah it's the sephir it's huge dude you see <laughs> that's the cover for it it's huge but it's got all the non-canonical you got, you got hard cover is, is there an online version of that i, I can believe... get my hands on that yeah, you want to get it. It's very worth it. How much uh, is it? Uh, Who's this that talking? Is that Shani? Uh, no, that that's Curious Boys. Welcome. Hello. Hello and welcome. Uh, yeah, you can get this. I think this copy retails for like 80. Uh, the cover's like 10 extra or 15 extra or something. But $80. uh Woo. I know it's rough. But I do believe there is... I do believe... Oh, okay. Stop, please. I'm trying to be serious for once. Look, this this is a great this is a great thing. I'm not saying it's like perfect translations. I'm not saying that, but but it's if you want all of the non canonical books, this why would you not want this? It's it's all the gospels. It's it's the entire Bible plus like, all. Like the gospels. Does it have the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> See, I could take that humor. That's funny. Okay. It's worth it, folks. Because even if you don't believe in the Bible, it's got some cool story. Enoch is an amazing book, David. Yeah, it, I've read online versions of it. And there's there's some of it I look at and I go, hmm, really? Yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. There are fake Enochs out there. You got to be careful. Well, but, like a eunuch? Describe the pillars of the earth and all that. and Enoch. You know, where where, where where the winter winds come from and th i mean we we know we know scientifically why we have snow and ice and all that hey my honey i really love you i love you ma'am okay this is see this is a really good discussion though <coughs> because <clears throat> a, a lot of the angel stuff we're talking about it's in enoch enoch the book of enoch Seventh from Adam. How Enoch. many pages well, is it? It's a lot. It would be a hard sell for me to believe you're an, a reincarnated angel or something like that. No, it's not reincarnation. It's avataring. Like that like, almost sounds like possession to me, man. No. Like Jesus was avatared by the Father God. That's what we got going on.
Uh, yeah, that's kind of a carnal way of describing it, but yeah. Okay. Well, it's the best way I can. Um, I just, I, well, I just say that Jesus is the human expression of God Himself. Yeah, exactly. Which is another way of saying an avatar, I guess. That's accurate and correct, but I'll show you the insides of this thing. It's it's a very cool scripture. I got it all tabbed up and everything. Have you seen Avatar: The Last Starbender? No, I don't watch that stuff. No, I haven't. Seen oh, it. whoa! Tone it down. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't watch that stuff, folks. But yeah, it's all tabbed out. It's got all the tabs on it, and uh, I'll just open to Enoch for you, so you can see Enoch. You know what book I used to use that was pretty cool, and that's the uh -huh. Strong, the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Uh -huh. Yes, there's Enoch. But I, I, even though I have a copy, I, I can't really read it very well because my eyes are so bad now and the print's so small. Bless you. So what I like doing, what I, what I used to do with it was I used to like, I like you look up a word, like in whatever language, Greek or Hebrew, and I'd look, I'd, I'd not only look up the word, I'd look up all the root words and the words that were related to it. Yeah. And I'd get like a more comprehensive understanding and and some of the things that i was looking at yeah and figuring out you know Is this guy gonna that, stop that, you know that, that some of that stuff got me branded as a heretic like like if you look up the lake of fire yeah and you find out what it really what it's really describing yeah and it'll, it'll, it'll get you branded as a heretic. accent's gonna change australian and back to bostonian too I don't know, but I don't want to mislead folks and make them think that I'm getting like heretical translations and all this bullshit. This is what I use. It's a 1611 KJV. That's well, what it is. Is that the year? Because people, uh, people people aren't ready for deep stuff. What you know, dude? People, people who go to people who go to church, they're not they're not ready to hear really deep stuff. They can't handle uh, it. That's, that's exactly right, David. They're, yeah, on, yeah. they're on the milk, dude. Paul talked about the spiritual meat that you have to be weaned off milk and start eating meat, and then you'll prophesy, you'll see visions, you'll have all this crazy stuff happen and be like, wow, okay, I get the Lord really well now. But that's not, they're on the milk, David. They want to just hear that I, they're saying. I had a, back in 2004, uh, when I converted to universalism, um, it was because, it was because I had. I just think I, I talk a, too much. What's that? What, buddy? This nigga talks too much. Oh my god! I talk too much. Oh, he he's tr nope. he's nope. he's 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 a kind troll. Yeah, I think so. Cool. And do you guys want to talk to each other and get to know each other a little bit? Oh, David, I think Hi, David. Hi. I don't I don't know who you are. Yeah. I think Becky uh, wants on. Are you a Christian? Curious boys. Oh yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, so you'll probably hate the stuff I'm talking about. Anyway, um, you're kind of freaking me out. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Then hold on, hold on to your chair, I guess. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know, back, back in two thousand in two thousand four, I I had a like. I wouldn't oh, call geez. it vision per se, but it was, it was like I heard it was like I heard God felt his presence. Yes. And he basically told me that he saved he saved everyone. He saved everyone, whether they believe it or not. He saved them. I, I really, 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 really like that idea. And, and I there's a verse in Revelation. I remember when me and G Man was having a having a, an argument at Andy Capps hang on. I still got the video where I defeated him about universalism because i gave him a verse he could, not, he could not explain i i told him a verse he could he could not explain and he, he said he had to go get help i said why can't you just tell me what you think you you go you have to go get your friends to tell you what to think you, why can't you just read the verse and try to understand it you got to take it easy on g-man he's kind of retarded All right. well yeah i know that now but anyway <laughs> but so the verse is is i believe it's revelation chapter 5 verse 13 where it describes it describes the entire universe and it says every creature everywhere both in heaven under the sea under the earth i mean everywhere every place you can find every place you can go all was given glory to god now that can only happen at the end of everything 
and the way the way the book of Revelation is, is written, it will like it will like like some part, like like the first part will tell the entire story from one from one point of view, and then another chapter will start telling the same story from another point of view. So, and that's how that's how you have to look at it. You have to. It's not like like a lineal thing. It's like are you like you're talking tell the whole story, and then Dave, and then they'll start it the whole story again from a different perspective. Yeah, Dave, you're talking about the Book of Revelation, right? Yeah, I agree with you absolutely. So, Revelation. Uh, Chapter five, verse thirteen explains that oh everyone, everywhere, even under the earth, which is supposed to be hell, that that they're all praising God, they're all giving glory to God. Why would you do that if you're in eternal torment? And G Man couldn't answer. Okay, yeah, that's a very, 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 very effective question, David. I like the question because a lot of those verses got mistranslated. That's true too. Yeah by people who want to push a narrative instead of trying to understand truth yeah you know you, you're very smart dave and it's a blessing to have you no doubt well a lot of people that that are that oh are, my god are, here we go again they, they they go to the very end where it talks about how the unbelievers are are outside the city and and they have their part in the lake of fire well that well that's actually translated to, to me that that they went through the lake of fire and they said that's what that they had their part that means that means they're not currently there but it hypothetically say they are it describes the city and is the city you know in one place yeah where all the good people are but this said about outside that means everything outside is where all the bad people are so is the no, I, I, oh my god people, it's, see i sitting in the middle of the lake of fire yeah Doesn't that's make sense. Oh my God! Yeah, David, like that's really good stuff, and I think you're you got it. Like is I think, done? uh, this is really actually very good shit. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, this is the type of talk you want to have. I'm sorry, uh, curious boys, but uh, it's good stuff, you know. Uh, that's, well, there's there's a lot, of, a lot of things in our Bible that's been that's been mistranslated. That's true. You could go to the Codex Sinaiticus. Even though Veckel hates doing that, and he try, and they say, well, th well, those differences don't really matter, right? Maybe not on the surface, but yeah, they do because it sets up a pattern. You can, yeah. you can go and you see there's a pattern of alteration. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you, David. Like you're, you're a very smart guy, and P you never get enough credit. It's like I would let see. I had my ministry. My for behavior kind of hurts that a bit. What, Dave? So my 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 behavior kind of hurts that a bit. Well, no, listen, like this is where Christians kind of lose it because it's like, look, yeah, some of our behaviors, all of us are messed up sometimes. But that does not mean that you shouldn't post your videos about revelations and stuff that you might get from God, because my seven year ministry ended. It was literally seven years. Well, I'm and, just and, of arguing with people about it. I'm trying, I'm trying yeah, to do the same things over and over again. I'm I know. To, uh, not, and not do the same people. I know. It's pathetic, Dave. I know. But my point is, is if you're getting revelation from the Lord on stuff, you should definitely have it on your channel. And I love you, bro. That's all. But yeah, see, but you know, I'm I I have my doubts about some things too. It's like like, you know, I'm I'm not a very good person. And like, yeah. you know, what what if I'm wrong about something? You know, I, I look at that like I was I was wrong about uh, Hillary Clinton becoming president and all that. I thought that's how it would happen. And it did, did somebody get this nigga a Xanax? Who, me? Yeah. yeah. Why would you say that? I'm perfectly calm. Okay, keep going. Jeez. So, you know, so I, I have doubts. That, you know, like, even though there's the most, most of me is like saying, well, I believe this stuff. But there's a part of me saying, but I've been wrong before about some things. So, I mean, that's just part of being human. You know, that's just part of being, of, of, of having to live in this world. Sure. I mean, and and yeah, just I mean, have doubts. Yeah. And just because you didn't see a, a Hillary Clinton situation perfectly clearly doesn't mean that the prophecy was wrong. It just well, I don't think it was because now that, now that I look at it more objectively, yeah. I didn't see Bill Clinton become the Antichrist until after I was in heaven. Ah, that's amazing, Dave. I totally get what you're saying, brother. 
Wow. I And it's really creepy to me that I share a birthday with Bill Clinton, you know? Oh, you got the same birthday as him? Well, I have a same. lot of people do. Sorry. There's, there's yeah. all three days. <laughs> it's true, Dave. So. Yeah, there's all there's only 365 days in the year, so every everybody shares birthdays with someone. That's true. You're such a gentleman, Lee Russell. Uh oh, Lee Russell, huh? Yeah, he says, unlike the geek room, I'd actually laugh if you died, Shani. Wow. Especially if you fell on Rev and crushed him to death. That's that's what? a lovely statement David, to give to someone. David, is this reprobated atheist behavior, brother? Uh. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's pretty bad, isn't I, it? Dave? I, don't, I don't think I don't think it's necessary. Amen. I mean, if she, if Shanny's acting a certain way, eh, man, I don't know. I I can kind I can kind of see their point a little bit, and but I don't I don't see her acting up right now. So I really my heart's not in like like saying stuff about her. Yeah, but see, this is how they run though. It's like I don't do anything, and they keep pushing and push and push and push and push, and then I react, and then I'm like, for about five weeks, a total fucking horrible scum of the earth. And then, and then well, I, can I can only speak for myself, Jenny. I can only speak for myself, but like, like I, I feel like saying stuff to you or about you when you're doing certain things, like right yeah. now, you're doing it. So, I, so my heart's not in it. No, I understand. Look, hey. Uh, it looks like the Curious Boys situational individual wanted to speak on some kind of matter, and they're just saying that David was going on and on, which is not true. He was giving details of a Christian thing, and he got not. I won't even say Christian; it's spiritual stuff. So, what folks. would he want me to do? So, what would he want me to say? Yeah, that's what I'm saying exactly. It's like they want you to be their puppet. It's not going to happen. I mean, yeah. Well, I'm not necessarily. <laughs> you know, I try to be their mouthpiece, but what yeah. would you expect me to talk about? Exactly. That's what I'm talking. That's thank you, David. You said it well. But anyway, this curious boys apparently wanted to talk to us about something. I, I, I Becky wants to come in. Becky can come in. Like, cool. I with I just want people treated fairly and, and they're acting like we, we didn't let them come in here and get a question in. So if when you come in, you can ask your question, okay? See, and, I, and I'm cool as long as as long as I don't get grossed out, you know, with the sex talk and all that stuff. Yeah. Or we don't go we don't go too far down the rabbit hole with the archangel stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm cool. No, no, I'm not gonna trigger you, David. And especially the sex that was gross. That that drag. Oh it, oh. I don't know what what one are you talking about? All right. Where he where he made fun of you sitting on the toilet. Oh, God. No, they came in this room and were asking, like, ugh, they were just gross. Well, but it was it was not okay. And Rev said yeah, something. Yeah, in, my, in my opinion, in my opinion that that video you and Rev did was was nasty. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry you had to um, be grossed out, dude. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to be a prude, but come on. <laughs> come on. I'm sorry, man. We're all adults here, David. We we I think the problem is if we got to know each other way too much and we've gotten way too close. Who's this Becky Good here? She's saying I talk too much. What do you want me to just sit here? She's she's a lesbian and she has a major cr girl crush on me, and you know, that's okay. I'm fine with that. Oh, oh, okay, Becky. Why don't you come on in and 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 uh, put your mojo on Shanny? See how see how it goes. Yeah, uh, David's like, come on, let, let's go. You you go in the room and uh, yeah, you Shanny come through. Let's I'll, I'll, see I'll how it goes. Back. You know, maybe have a couple drinks. You know, right. <laughs> go that way, man. David's got some smooth talk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were a really pimp right. back in the day, weren't no, you, David? No, no, no. Okay. I was I was extremely shy back in the day, and I still no, know. I believe that you've probably always been a gentleman in but, your own way. I don't know, somehow, I don't know. It just depends. It just just it just depends on the situation. But I still can't figure out. When I was seventeen, I had a twenty-one-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> wow, amazing! Oh, wow! That's pretty cool. And All right. 
uh, and she wouldn't do anything. And I mean, I, she let me kiss her and stuff, but she wouldn't let me, she wouldn't let me do anything else. And I, God, did I try? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really, I really tried. And it's like, no, 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 just, just, just a little peck on the lips. That's all we're doing. We can hold hands and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, we can go, we go out to dinner and things like that. Uh, like, I was like, <laughs> like, oh man, oh man, I need to take five cold showers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> The weed is making me too self-reflective. Oh so, I mean, yeah, I, I did okay. I mean, I wasn't like a stud or anything, but I did okay. That's cool, dude. I'm sorry. I'm in a weird mood. I'm also very tired with that that Vaughn Rage Fest. Oh, man. Um, yeah, that was mad. How'd oh. you hit it? I just don't know how to handle Vaughn in my rooms. He just always yells and screams in them. Oh, well, the same way you do everybody else. You mute. Uh, oh, I wouldn't want to mute him. That would, that would take away the view time for the Irvinites. Yeah. Do you know uh, how long they're going to die that tape? Yeah, I want that. I don't, I don't understand that. What are you talking about, Irvinites? Uh, uh, you don't know who the Irvinites are? I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, the Irvinites are people who legitly examine psychologically in all different ways and shapes and forms of Vaughn Helton. Yeah. Why, why would they care? I don't know. They find him absolutely fascinating. And not only is there Irvinites now, but they're Shannonites. I used to find him funny <laughs> until until he you know he started engaging me directly, and then and then I just I just find him just stupid my salad and he's not really he's not really worth my time to look into too deeply the ranch and sorry about that what was that? I, I said i said that uh back before i started engaging him directly i i had seen a couple of his videos and i knew who he was and i always thought he was just funny yeah you because know, the stuff he said was so weird i think i was in a hangout with them once and that was when me and Annabelle got into it. Oh. And so Vaughn really, Vaughn wasn't the one that was like freaking out. It was me going on, off on Annabelle. And uh, so, yeah, I was like, I was kind of like Vaughn back in the day a little bit. And uh, anyway, so I never really had that much, in, that much engagement with him. And I just, I just laughed at his claims, you know, like the stealth bomber stuff and the internet stuff and the Punisher stuff and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just, oh, he's just, he's just crazy and funny. So just let's laugh, you know, just laugh at him. Don't take it so seriously. He's obviously off his rocker. And uh, so then, then I started talking to him directly and he was like attacking me. He was like, I'd ask him a question and he'd get all offended and everything. And I, then I started calling him out on some of his shit. And uh, yeah. so him and me started having a few issues God. and, and this, this is where we are. Yeah. No, I understand that because, look, I'm just going to say it again for individuals, okay? I respect Vaughn. I love him. I've, I've always uh, enjoyed him speaking on stuff because a lot of the New World Order stuff he talks about is correct and accurate. So... I always felt an obligation to be there for a brother in the in the in the pulpit when they're discussing stuff that a lot of people just shun and they now, say. Are you sure that this is this is him saying this to you or not something he's just repeating? Uh what do you mean, David? Say again. All the stuff I heard him say about New World Order stuff, I can find you know very easily online. Sometimes. Sure. Yeah, but he's been doing it since before the internet, Dave. I mean, he was doing like. Really. I don't Huh? Do you really think so? Yeah, I believe him. I I don't okay. think he's not. When no, I look into it, doesn't really it, matter to me that much. I, yeah, I I I can't put any stock in in his situation and the things That's he's fine. doing. I can't put much stock in it. That's and fine. It's like it's like he's detached in a way. You know, especially because you could tell when he was eating while that woman was talking about how she felt about her dead mother. Yeah, and he was eating ice cream though, and, and he could have at least turned the camera off. Yeah, I you, because it was you're saying that I now I understand why you're saying that. It's because she was talking about some heavy shit, right? Right, and he was eating like it was nothing. You know, so yeah, it, I totally. Not only was it gross to look at, it was disrespectful. 
Yeah, I th I agree with you, David. That that is rude. You know, like, like when I when I you know when I ate my my burger and fries, I didn't do it on camera. I had the camera off. Right. Because I just got I just got home, and you know as soon as I got home, you know I well I now changed clothes and refreshed myself a little bit and turned the camera on, and here here I was. Yeah. I just started eating because you know I picked up sudden eat on the way home. Yeah, but David, can you believe that we live in an era, brother? Because I'm an old soul. Like, I'm not as old as you, bro, but I feel like I'm pretty much as old as you. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're, 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 you look good for – you look good anyway. Uh, the, no, I don't, but go ahead. <laughs> all right. I always give compliments to people. They never take them, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> the thing that's – the my problem with the situation here is that there's a lot – Okay, people don't understand. Like, there's a clock in heaven. Uh, like, the time's running out. You yeah, can, of course. Like, like, these things with COVID and, like, the even atheists are saying, okay, what's next? I mean, TJ the Amazing Atheist had a poll on his Twitter and the majority of atheists said that, oh, yeah, it's most likely... I've stopped watching him ever since I heard about the banana. I know, I know, but I'm just saying he had a poll on his Twitter and the majority of atheists said probably the next thing that's coming is Christ is returning. Like atheists said it and that's a joke poll or whatever, but that's what they chose. There was aliens invading. There was a uh, World War three. Uh, and two more, but the last one was Jesus Christ returning, and it was 52% of the people said Jesus is going to come back. What? Like, that's something to praise God for, I think. Like, for real, Dave, that's cool. You well, know? when he comes back, you know, but people people confuse that coming like a thief stuff. Um, when, when he comes back, everyone's going to see it. It isn't going to be, it is going to be like, 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 surprise, here I am. Yeah, it's going to be, you're going to see it coming. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, um, it's like you're going to see the sky part and you're going to see a, a slow descent yeah. and it's going to be worldwide. It's going to be everywhere in the world, every, every, every position. It'll be like, I don't know how long it will take, but it'll be like you see some asteroid approaching. I mean, it's going to take, it's not going to be like, boom, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a slow descent and everybody's going to be freaking the hell out. Oh, I think you're right. It said, and not only that, here's another part that doesn't make sense. If every, if every, if people are like uh, against Jesus and they're going to go, they're going to go to hell, and they, and they, and they so they want to fight him and all that. It says that every tribe, every tribe on earth will mourn as one would mourn for their only child. Every, every, every tribe of man on earth will mourn for him. You don't do that to someone you hate. I mean, if if you hate Jesus, I mean. How, how, I mean, th there's things that don't make sense to me. If, you know, if like there's this huge division between faith and, and ways of thinking and stuff. Yeah. No, I hear you, Dave. No, there's an, Maya said that there's a series on Netflix called The Messiah and you should watch it. I, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll watch that, Shani, huh? How do you feel about that? Definitely. Yeah, we'll watch that. But no, it's like people don't understand that. Like, you got to really look at what's happening in the world right now. I mean, you got crazy. The sun is like changing, Dave. Like, there's, well, I mean, this. I haven't paid attention to that. Stuff's going pretty crazy right now. The sun is doing stuff they've never seen it do before. What's the dragon there stuff was, you're talking about. Yeah, that's real, dude. I saw it in the sky. They, they are real. Uh, but they hide pretty well, let's say that. But they come out for people that are spiritually not going to hurt them. They're like very spiritual beings. Well, dragons are the enemy, man. Right. You would think so. But some of them are benevolent. I saw a benevolent dragon that looked like an angel. I don't know angel. about that one, man. It's fine. It's okay. It's my experience. I know that you, okay. I know that you had an experience with an angel, Dave, right? Yeah. I had an I angel visit me. I believe you. I believe yeah, you about it, your it, angel. It scared me to death. I, I bet it did. They're holy beings. You can't, they're like, what? You know? We're not like yeah. that. See, that's what I'm saying. It, 
Well, I, I've yeah. had people. I've had people try to tell me that uh, you know I'm full of crap and all that. It doesn't matter. I know what I, I know what happened. We have marks but, from our wings. It's real, dude. I'm telling you. Like I didn't even see it, but it's there. There's marks on us. It's crazy. But anyway, we don't ask you to believe that. Yeah, that, that's that's going to be a hard sell for me. We don't ask you to believe that. Well, it's, it's just like the claim that I have about the angels seeing me. That's a, that's a hard sell. It really, of course, it's a hard of sell. Course it really it is. is. But it you know, really okay. Is. it's okay. I know what I know what happened to me. And right. what happened? To me, I was 19. It was really weird because when oh. I got I got out of boot camp, I got out of boot camp, and I went home on leave. And I came back, and they lost my service record book. So back then, you know, they didn't have like internet computers and all that. This is this is nine. This is like nineteen. This is nineteen eighty two. Okay, so what they did is they had to rebuild my service record book. So that was going. That took about two weeks to rebuild it. And uh, in the meantime, I had to go stay in these barracks by myself, and I, I was like nothing to do. You know, watch TV in the day room. You know, uh, go to the library, read books and stuff. So I started reading up on the Bible and stuff, and I, and, you know, and I started doing a little bit of fasting. You know, I would I would eat just a tiny bit. I would eat just a tiny bit, and I would drink just a tiny bit, and I did that for like a week. And I prayed constantly, and I was wanting I was wanting to know, you know, when when was all this gonna when was all this gonna end? When were we all gonna go to heaven? Where when, when you know when is the rapture taking place? So I was really wanting to know. Well, anyway, praise God. This was this was Sunday morning. April 25th, 1982. And I woke up and I'm on the top bunk. I'm the only one there. I mean, there's there's nobody in that squad bay but me. Because I was the only one that, I mean, it was an empty squad bay. And so they put me there while they rebuilt my service record book. I was basically in limbo. So I woke up and I felt like a million bucks. I felt like I haven't like everything was wonderful. Every everything loved me. I loved it. I I remember putting my hand out and touching the cold concrete wall because you know that's what squad base had. They didn't have like stuff they got now. It was like cold concrete. But it, and so I put my hand. I remember touching it, and I turned my head and standing right over me, six inches from my face, was this person. And I'm on the top bunk, so this this person had to be at least nine or ten feet tall, and he had to bend down to be like right up in my face because he's like six inches from my face. So I got a real good look at him, and uh, he had this white floating substance around him, and it was like it was like parts of it would be like breaking off, like on floating, and it was brilliant, but a soft brilliance. It wasn't like a hard light; it was like soft, and I just felt all this euphoria and all that, and he, he asked me, are you ready, David? Like I was going to be raptured right then. And I remember being shocked. And only thing I could think was, was in my head, like I couldn't say, I couldn't speak anything, but in my mind, I was screaming out, it's God. You know, that was, <laughs> and then, and then I, I shut my eyes closed and I turned my head away and I went, oh, <laughs> And then my heart started skipping beats. I thought I was gonna have a heart. I was like, I, I laid there for like a good three or four minutes. And I'm like, okay, Lord, okay, I'm ready. And I opened my eyes, and there was nobody there. Wow, that that's awesome, dude. That's a testimony, and I believe in a hundred percent. I believe you, because I've had those moments where you encounter certain things. That's just not. You can't explain that shit by a physical just normal like no that's spiritual it's like something happens so like i just that's why i pray for atheists to get that to get that experience because it's very real there <laughs> you, nobody's going to tell you it wasn't real dave because it was well, no know? i can try but i don't care you know they didn't they didn't go through it i did right and it, it wasn't for them it wasn't for them or or they would have had that experience Exactly, dude. I wish we could get some more individuals in here because I have to rest my voice, folks. I've been, I've been, <laughs> I gotta rest it. I don't understand what this person's problem is in the chat. Yeah, I don't. What? I think, David, you're being a fantastic guest. You gave us Christian testimonies. You gave us some Christian knowledge. Uh -huh. you, you gave us some anti New World Order knowledge. Okay, so no, you're a good guest. Okay, don't don't pay attention to that. Oh, 
I, I don't know what they're talking about. What in the chat? Yeah, I don't. Oh, well, they're saying like I, I love to hear myself talk. Uh, oh, uh, they're just they're just they're just obsessed with me, and they want to hear me at all times. Yeah, so That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. David's a sweetie pie. Yeah. <laughs> you won't think so when you look at some of my recent videos. Okay. No, I understand. It's what you do. You pop off. It's fine. I get it. I pop off too. Yeah. You, get it. you have emotions. You're free to have your emotions. We all do. Well, you, you, you say that now, but maybe in a week you might not. Oh. It just it just depends it just depends on you know what's going on and how we feel. Well, I'm just being myself lately. I'm like at the point where I just don't care anymore. I'm just gonna be me, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of there too. Like I just I just don't care. Like if I cuss so don't well, why? Don't catch these hands, <laughs> David. Don't catch these hands. Well, I don't know what it, it depends on what you want to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Becky is like lay off her. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that the one that one, said, that is the lesbian that got a crush on you? Yes, one minute. Okay. What what is going on? Sorry. One minute. I don't love David for the record. Just Shannon and Griff. All right, Zup. I'm trying to get people to come in here if they'd like to. But people are shy. They don't want to talk. And plus, also, the geek room's on. So all the people who want to go and talk are there. Well, you know, I'm, I'm teaching you how to write fiction, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, speaking of fiction, what happened to that one like um what what that one one story you did? I think it was called like the demonic the de oh, I, uh, the, I changed the it to, I changed it to another another type of story. And I, then I just gradually lost interest in it. I just I actually really enjoyed the concept of what you were mm -hmm. doing in that in those videos. Oh, there was there was there's that was back when a lot of drama started happening, and, I, and you know, so uh, I. I wish you finished it. I was really interested. Well, I I changed it a bit. I changed it to a different story, and uh, it's it's on my what what pet page. It's called the Vamponic. Mm, okay. But um, it's on my what pet page. I thought it was so interesting how like. If I remember correctly, it was you writing about Jesus as a demon? No, no, uh, no. Not quite like never, that, exactly? I wouldn't even do that as fiction. Okay. What was it exactly? It was like, it was like, the, it, it, was, it was about, it was about um, a, a demon that uh, was possessing a man and trying to drag him further further into into more deeper possession and uh okay. and it got into the man's family history it got into uh the demon's past it got it showed how how things were were connected to each other how the town was connected it's like so everything everything that seemed to be a coincidence or, or a circumstance was actually arranged by higher powers and I was going to involve the Kickapoo Indian Nation. I was going to involve Druids. I was going to involve um, other, there, was, there was just it was just getting deep. And uh, uh, something that something like the Fountain of Youth was going to be in there. Nice. Yeah, I mean, like I I remember I I liked what you were doing too a lot. Uh like people don't understand writing fiction to like to try and get it produced is so hard because I well, mean the main reason to write it Rev is to, is to entertain yourself. Yeah, I think that's true. 
Well, it's out. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. It's true for every writer. Yeah, I think that's very true. It you is. Gotta write, you got to write for an audience of one first. You're right. And that makes the writing so much better when it's personal and like, yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh, but you know, I'm right. You know, I'm writing a, a fan fiction. Yeah. It's based on a portion of your book. Are you serious? Yeah. I took a little line out of your book. Oh, wow. You wow. haven't been watching my, my videos. Have you? I've got, no, uh, I got to watch your stuff, three. man. I'm up to lesson three now. I wrote, it's called, <laughs> you're going to hate me, man. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> it's called, that's fine. it's called Metatron's baby carrot. Oh, that's nice, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So no, I see now. So I, okay. I, I just got done making a character profile for Metatron, and it's really deep. See, because I've gone through several writing courses, and I've had professional writers mentor me and stuff. And um, one of the, one of the things one of the things you got to do the very first thing you got to do is you got to make a character profile for your main character. I mean, a, an in-depth one. Most, but I think I mentioned something like this once before when I was like me and you were when I was writing the Demoniac, yeah. and uh, I said ninety percent of the stuff you write, the reader will never see. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's true. And because you know, you got character profiles, you got you got scenes that you practice scenes that you write um, to give you a more in-depth, and there's like. There, there's like so there's like so many aspects i mean you don't have to do all those things but if you do quite a few of those things your story will be awesome oh yeah you're talking about yeah like an outline just you're talking about outlines and, yeah more in depth than that even you're talking i'm talking character profiles i'm talking uh, plot uh plot twists i'm talking all kinds of stuff that's the best way to do it without a doubt you're right but see, the way I like to write is to just, I got it here. It's like a file cabinet, and I know it's there. Huh? Okay. Yeah, it's like a file cabinet. I know it's there. I thumb through the stuff that's up here, and I'm like, okay, that's where it is. And then I type it, and it's like weird. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you got them printed out? I if I got no. Nice. I don't remember where I left a lot of it. Oh, like, I don't know if you can see. Let me turn it right No, on. I know. Oh, thank you for that. See, like, like this. God, that's awesome. Thank you. But, yeah, okay. I see. That's neat, Dave. See, all my stuff like that is back in Scranton. I don't see, like, this here. guy here um, says, like, uh, the creating story idea could be used as an opening scene for a chapter of a short story. Yeah, Antonio, Tony Lewis Marcus. I base it on, on myself. I see. From from it was from a while back though. Yeah, I see, Dave. Baker, That's Kansas, awesome. Man. Made up a made up a made up a town. Right. Where I was born and. Yeah, okay. that's what. Stuff yeah. like that. And that's that's like that's definitely something that uh, getting to the short story book writers do yeah oh, or mother great mother great where, oh, I, I, where, I turn, where I turn my horrible abusive mother into a specter ha <laughs> ha see I, see I got stuff like this man I hear you that's very productive and see like you could bundle all of those things that are, that are like thought forms more so than like full stories or whatever and you can put that in a work and if it's good enough you're gonna get you're gonna make money eventually on it uh, but you know that that's what you do you you have you have profiles on most of this stuff nobody ever see heck i got my old laptop here i got a crap ton of old half finished stories on i got i got my my email i got my email account that's uh, this guy i got like about 40 stories in, in my freaking email that I'm yeah most of horrible but, uh, yeah so I mean, I got I got tons of stories, man. Tons of That's stories. Really, finished. Hey, and, see, look, I could. I mean, I can tell you, Dave. Yeah, uh, if you think your stuff is good to, enough to shop to like Penguin and shit, that's awesome. Well, but, first thing I do is finish something. Right, you got to finish something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's really getting distracted, going into other things. Yep. 
it's true. That's the that's the way writing works. It's like there is a lot of stuff up here. And but see, that's what I did with the thing I did is like I was like, okay, I'm gonna focus on this like a fucking laser. The story, the characters, the arc of the story from 273 years, however long it's supposed to be. Uh, this is, oh, now this Becky Goodhair is saying Rev Poetry Book Mischief has stopped throwing shade. You know, I actually complimented Rev on publishing his book in my very first lesson. That's I, I very actually, cool. I actually told him that I respect him very much for that. Well, thank you. That's cool. No, I know what you're doing there, and that's cool. And he, I'm, you, there's probably very constructive criticism in that because I told you, I told people. No, I didn't I, analyze your book. I didn't analyze your book. Oh, okay. Not really. Not really. What what I said what I said was is that what little bit I read, which was the free sample part. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't I didn't put it on camera. I thought I did, but I didn't. Yeah, and, you thought uh, it was cool, right? So so I would so I said what little of it I read, and you yeah. wrote that in high school. Yeah, I started right? it. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, when you were doing this in high school, you were already a better writer than I was at that age. Oh wow! Well, thank you for that, Dave. I mean, all right, thank you. But that's really, really nice of you, David. And but I think your stuff is really good too, brother. And it's just it is focusing on one thing and finishing it. That's what it is, bro. It definitely is. Yeah, it is. It's, that's, that's so I pray for you. I hope you. I hope you get that done. It's awesome. I hope you get it. That that one project that pops and you're like a millionaire. Well, in my, the right as as of to date, uh, my my. <laughs> greatest my greatest thing that i that i wrote that's my that's my baby basically is the machine cohesive i mean that that like encompasses like like everything i ever imagined as far as fiction my fiction stories and stuff and i, and I called it the machine cohesive right so that's like the closest thing to a complete work that's what you're saying. Well, yeah, more or less. Right. It it seemed it, uh, my my uh, my science fiction writing universe, not the supernatural stuff. Right. In my science fiction writing universe, uh, that is the universe that I write in. It's the universe right. of the machine cohesive. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And the machine cohesive is 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 uh, an alien race that they're they're machines, but they're microscopic and they live they live in some gaseous form kind of like the great link in uh, star trek but gotcha. they live in a port and they, and they just and they just control everything even when you don't think they do it's like they will find a civilization they'll put a little bit of their of their microscopic machines into everything and they'll and they'll just be manipulating and stuff and nobody will even know that sounds awesome david actually i mean see that's you you have a lot of good ideas that's cool dude and that I just hope that you can, you know, even self-publishing, you need resources. Yeah, yeah. it costs money. You can't, you, know, you can't do it for free. No, and then you need to get an editor. You have to have one, and at least one edit pass of your, you have to. And it's still expensive. It's like, it's, yeah, it's not cheap getting into self-publishing. It's not. So, and then the profit margins, depending on where you go. I went to Lulu Press to to do mine, and you don't yeah, make. I've heard, I've heard mixed things about them. You don't make shit, but most, most writers really don't. I right. mean, it's the rare exception that I mean, even if you're talented, it's right. the rare exception that you actually become successful. Exactly. That's that's why you do it because you enjoy it. You do it because it's fun. It's a love. That's right. And right. I don't know how one gets published, really. Even I don't understand. I have to read you have, my. Okay, computer. if you if you what what you got to do is you got to look at the people who made it, and who's a bigger name than Stephen King? Right. Okay, Stephen King. A lot of people think, oh, Stephen King wrote this book and it got published. No, Stephen King was already a known writer. I mean, he started what? at fifteen. He came from a family of people where they were obsessed with books. That's that's. They were so poor. That's all they could do is read read to each other. Right. That's that. That's how they spent their. You know, like some people would watch TV and you know at night after dinner they read books to each other. That's what his family did because they were that poor. And right. uh, Stephen King was an English was junior high school English teacher, and he but when, before he uh, became a teacher when he was in high school he wrote for a school newspaper. So 
I mean, he was already an you know an accomplished writer, you know, by the time he was fifteen. I mean, he yeah he was raised up into it. True. All right, Dave, I have to I have to reboot real quick. Shani, can you All take right. this for me, honey? Because I got to reboot. I'll be right back. Yes. I'll be right back. Welcome. I will. What's up, Dave? Uh-huh. Well, you know, same old thing. I don't know why it's like doing that to your computer. Oh, okay. But this is an interesting topic, actually. Sci-fi writing. And, 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 and Dave's into fantasy. It's the, what, fantasy, Dave, too? You're into all I mainly write. I mainly write horror, science fiction. Mm. Oh, uh, very rarely will I write fantasy. Oh, my God. And I will not touch Westerns. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll, but I'll write a Western before I write a romance. Understood. <laughs> Try a romance, David. I'm I want I want to write romance novels. Oh, you'd be good at that. Oh, rom- romance novels make me gag. <laughs> well, you're not a female. Yeah, you're not female. That's pretty much the reaction. Like, they're... they're uh-huh. Unless they're, it's like got a lot of interesting historical stuff in it, I, I couldn't be into it. I remember, remember my mom had this uh, had a series of... Uh, uh, romance novels and some of it some of it was historical like uh oh gosh what was i can't remember the name of that one series but it was, it was about revolutionary war stuff and there was a lot of historical stuff in there yeah. and you know i kind of like forced myself through the romance parts of it to get to like where you know where the history stuff was going on you know like the like ship battles and things like that and uh i remember reading stuff like that when i was a kid and um gosh what, okay there was a series called the bastard you remember okay that? And there was another series that was like it, but it wasn't the bastard. I can't remember the name of it. I don't. Do you remember? Do you remember the, a series called The Bastard? No, I don't remember the series of it was, The Bastard. It was about, okay, it's about this guy who was the bastard son of some British royalty or something, and he, and he was denounced by his family, and and he came to America as a pauper, and he and he worked his way up and became something, and then and then now he had this legacy, and. Uh, very few of his descendants was ever worthy of all the stuff he did. So there was this, there was this, you know, followed his descendants like for 150 years down through history and, and told about how awful some of them were, how good a few of them were. And it was really interesting. That sounds very interesting. But yeah. there was, there was a romance part of it too. And I didn't care for that part, but well, but the rest of it, they actually made a, a, a movie series out of it. David, there's got to be a little bit of a romantic in you somewhere. Uh, yeah, but I I like keeping that to myself. And whoever I'm with. Such a gentleman. He's, a gentleman. Exactly. He's like Michael Jackson gentleman no, type. I, mean, I don't I don't like gawkers. I don't like I don't like I don't like people looking at me. Like, okay, I don't know what that video was with Drag was kissing his wife or whatever, trying to kiss his wife or I don't know what was going on there. But I didn't need to see it. Yeah. Oh, I did that. I I had to do that. Yeah. It it, it was. Well, wasn't that, I mean, he made the video, right? He, it was his. It was his. It video. was it was his video, yes. And I looped it <laughs> because I was providing a point that he is repulsive to women. Well, I only I only watched like about ten or fifteen seconds of it, and you, you don't know, need that much of no, to realize that. He even creeps his wife out. Uh, he creeped I, me out I today. I really didn't know what was happening there. I don't know. I don't know if she just wasn't in the mood, or maybe she was upset with them. Like I, I'm gonna be maybe, honest. Maybe, I'm gonna know, be maybe, honest. Maybe with she had her feelings hurt, and she did, and he was trying to, he was trying to like uh, console her or something. I, I, you don't know what was going on. See, I, see, those are those are those are intimacies that I really don't think people need to know about. I hear. Yeah, I wish someone kept some intimacies about me too yeah, we'll out of the. Out well, yes, uh, but I wish he didn't put it out on YouTube. Yeah. Well, you know, like, I, like I tried, like I tried to tell you, Shannon, you can't do anything about that. All you can do is move forward. I am yeah. moving forward from that, but still, yeah. I don't think I'm going to want to associate with them anymore. They really do creep me out. And it, it it it's just you know when you'd like break up with someone and they just get creepy on you. It's kind of like that type of feeling. Yeah, I hear you. It's like ew, get away from me. I don't. 
Well, that depends how, how recent was the breakup. I mean, I've, I've broken up with people and, you know, you got, you got to tell them like three or four times, you know, I don't want to be with you because, you know, they, they don't, they don't want it to happen. It's you a know, very, I've been, both, I've been on both sides of that situation. Okay. So, so it's a very recent relationship breakup and they were really nasty and they cheated on you and they were disgusting. That's the type of feeling. Uh, yeah. And and they're and they're gonna come around for a while and say I'm sorry please please forgive me let yeah. me they might they might do that for a few days and then and then after that it's like look she she she's not gonna take me back I might as well just leave her alone yeah I just I'm I'm just I uh, I can't with them anymore it, I can't I, I, I don't know I don't know if it's fair to equate your situation with drag as a breakup situation. I don't know if you fair uh, to do that. Well, I mean, it, it's well, you know, with pornography, you you create chains. Yeah, that's gonna haunt you. That's you, there's nothing anybody can do about that. That's, yeah, that's I gonna, know. Yeah, I know. And and I don't want to have anything to do with them because of those chains that were established. It's creepy to me. So the it's only, only thing you I can feel do is bad. Just, you know, I feel disgusted. just let them say what they say. Just ignore it. You know, if, if they if they if they want to look at that stuff and make rude comments and stuff like that, hey, that there's not nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I just I'm just creeped out by him at this point. I I just okay, I, well, that's your right to be creeped out. I mean, you can be creeped out if you want to. Yeah, I I I mean. Oh, you want me to put the yeah, link? The yeah, baby. And, and it's the same with Scientist Sam. I'm creeped out by him, too. Not so much with Jello shots. And I don't know why with Jello shots, but it's, like, expected for him to do yeah, something I like that. And I, don't know, I don't know who that is. Oh, well... <laughs> He wasn't creepy. That's the thing. He was just like, hey, I'm gonna look at it. She for Christ might as well. Fuck it. Yeah. You know, that's just how that's just how he is. Speaking, you know? of, speaking of being creeped out, are you the least bit creeped out of what G Man said about burnt toast? No. What what did he say about burnt toast? Yeah, what well, when Burnt Toast put out her uh her video uh showing uh all the stuff that how G Man has been treating her okay. um like over the last few months and maybe even longer. Um, that he said that he believes that she was a 16 year old girl, and then he continued to make sexual comments and when passes at her and stuff. I mean, he's getting kind of nasty. And it's like, I mean, and I said, I, rock I, thing. I mean, I was saying, Have you ever watched Catch a Predator? No, he was doing a rock thing, he was being stupid. He oh, was, no, he, no, 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 he was doing he's doing this. He's going to the camera, going, uh, Come on, let's go out, let's go out. He was, he was doing stuff like that. But while he was thinking she was 16. I will holy shit. I would not agree with that at all. Okay. I'm, so, not, gonna, I didn't I'm not making it up. The video's there. You can see it. All right. Well, I would not agree with that at all. It's disgusting. That's what is the hey, fuck is hey, wrong he with trolling, people? Right? He was only trolling, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I didn't see that. So I can't it's comment. ew. I Yes, is is ooh ooh is the least it is. Yes, it's you. I, I said if, I said he's lucky that he didn't say anything like that about anybody in my family. Like seriously, because my all son of us is like, looking for him. Every one of us, my brother, my cousins, all of us. My son is two and a half years to freaking sixteen. My granddaughter is that age. Oh my god, your granddaughter, man! My son could be your like grandson i guess that's yeah, awesome yeah, i'm almost 60 now yeah we got grandkids we don't have kids we got grandkids oh my god my son he had he it's like he's now hi mom okay, let's, not, let's not give away too much about your son man i'm not but i'm like that's where he is now like he grown and i'm like oh my okay, god baby. Cool. just just yeah. don't say anything that might embarrass him please is it because we're so close to each other with that's this fine. individual situation? That's bizarre. It's fine on my on my that's weird, dude. 
Is it must be interference because we're in the same room with the computer? It must be weird. Anyway, mine is like that too. On yours. Yeah, that's weird buffering issues. That's all. That's all right. I'm gonna turn off my cam because I want to change into a another shirt because I'm starting to get hot. All right, brother. We'd see David the David's uh, manliness, man. <laughs> There's no doubt. But anyway, let's see. Uh, are we going to review something or something? Yeah, we were supposed to be listening to Bunto. Yeah. Let's do that. Individuals that are disagreeing with me. All right. So, okay, tell me about them, Shani. Tell me about the haters. Where are they coming from? Are they atheists? Are they theists? Are they what, – what do you think they are? They're mostly <laughs> – I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, but they're mostly atheists. Okay. Um, trying to sway me into the atheistic lifestyle, and it's like I, I can't be an atheist anymore because it's like I was an atheist. Okay, and once, yeah, I was, but I, I mean, once you have an experience with God, it's kind of hard to deny. You know. Okay. Now, are these guys trying to be logical and reasonable, or they just say, you suck? What are they doing? Okay, some of them are logical and reasonable, like, um, you know, the Alex Botton or the J.D. Keynes. You know, I understand their whole perspective on how they see things. But then there's others like um, Glue and um, – a bunch of others that just want to just tear you apart. They call you names and they pick on you personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, you know, I you avoid could say, them. You, you could come out with a video saying, you know, you atheists are all right. And then they'd still hate the video. Right. I don't think they'd hate the video necessarily, but they would bring up other stuff. She said previously. This is this is like proof the atheists have been harassing me for years. This this video is from five years ago. Yeah, you, got a, you got a different definition of harassment than the rest of us. What is my definition of harassment? People constantly see, coming at me and t calling yeah, me names, well, calling me a little bad, calling me all these other things, the stuff, saying, Shani, the stuff they're saying is on their channels. Uh, I'm talking about the people who come to my channel, dear. Okay, well, yeah, that would technically be harassment, but you yeah, got control over that. You can block them, you can kick them out. You can do so. You got total control over that. Later, Maria. Enjoy your weedage. It is good, goodly, goodly stuff. But this is proof these people have been freaking bothering me for years. Can't stand it anymore. It's got to stop. They'd still blast you. Because they hate you, not the message. I. It could be that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of the opposite of atheists are pieces of shit. So, <laughs> but that was like me. Like I came out as a Christian, and they just a torrent of atheists came toward me, and it completely attacked me. And it's like, ah, and I hated that. I hated me being an atheist. I, I hated now that side. Of me I said he was when I was right. an atheist. I hated myself. So I guess it was kind of a self reflection of myself. And I didn't realize it at the time. Um, I do now. So now it's like instead of judging them by, you know, their generalization or their label, I judge people by the individual. Interesting. Well, that's what you should. Okay. Well, let me, you know, just give our listeners some backstory. You've been on YouTube for how long? Uh, I Seven, eight years now. Seven or eight years. So you were on YouTube as an atheist. Yes, I was. Okay. See, I was. Yeah. And then, like, what happened? I mean, could you, you know, explain that? How did, how did the needle hit zero when you flipped over to Christianity? I broke, man. I completely broke. Um, you broke as a person. Yeah. I, 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 I basically hit rock bottom in my life. Okay. Um. A lot of bad things happen. I really don't want to go into it. Okay. Um, but, but a lot you, of... Okay. You were born again. Yes. Okay. And then you spread 
you know, the happiness on YouTube, and then all of a sudden you discover that that's just not what the atheist wanted to hear, right? No. You know, your your life got better, and then, oh, you know, well, still you're a Christian, right? You know, that's what they hated. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, I can't change that part of me, and I certainly can't lie to myself of who I am and what I believe now. Right. I mean, as an atheist, I, I was fine. I mean, I made several videos about, you know, what, you know, women's, you know, right to abortion and, okay. you know, made spontaneous videos about sexuality and, you know, that was my big uh -huh. thing. Another thing That's was like totally, bashing God totally and me. Christians and I used to do that on YouTube, but well, there was another thing. I did I did make several videos um, complaining about the amazing atheists, but I mean All right. Do you know the guy? Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, you talked to him? A long time ago, yes. Okay, well, okay. What do you think of the guy? Just right you know <laughs> ambivalent or you think he's a loser? He's an or he has some valid points or what? To be blunt. Sure. He's one of the biggest assholes I've ever met. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's I mean, pretty much I described. TJ, right? That's the guy's name? He's a snarky, oh, yeah. smart ass. Yeah. Okay. TJ? So, like, why is he that? You said that. He's very, when you talk to him, he's extremely rude to you. He doesn't. He's rude. He, he, he is. He doesn't care about anyone's really? feelings, he only cares about himself. Um, he's been caught several times lying and cheating people. In, you know, it's just, it, it's like years and years of things of why I feel about the amazing atheists. I mean, eight years is a long time of getting to know someone, you know? Right. Um, okay. Okay. Well, let's say that's all the YouTube. Okay. How long have you been on G plus? Uh, I, I would say about a year, maybe a year and a half now, I all guess. Right, the reason I came over to G plus is if, cause I was a YouTuber and then they switched our comments, right? Yeah. To, to G plus comments. And then I actually mm -hmm. broke down and learned G plus. And then I actually grew pretty fond of G plus. Is that how you came on board? No, actually it was actually, I know this is funny, but it was actually Brett Keen that brought me to Brett Keen. Okay. How do you do yeah. that? Well, the thing is I didn't believe he was a Christian one bit. And I said, you're not a Christian. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't believe it one second because two years ago you were saying you were a Christian, scammed people out of all this money. Okay. And, you know, I didn't believe it. So he said, you know what, why don't you Skype me? So I Skyped him. We had a Sorry, conversation. Brett. And then he told me about G+. Plus, so I got in from there, um, went on his show and, you know, was frightened because it was like, here I am, like this baby Christian, you know, just, just, you know, barely formed baby Christian, you know, and I've been kind of secluded for like a whole year and doing nothing but reading the Bible mm -hmm. and then being exposed to all these atheists that I was like, I hated myself as an atheist. So it's like, I came to all these atheists and I hated them for, you know, <laughs> me self-reflecting. And it just was like, it was a bad thing. It was a bad thing last year that I went through. <laughs> last year sucked. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now you're here in G+. Okay, what's, just tell me about the great debate community. What do you think of the people around here? You like them? Are you making, oh, trying to reach out to them or what? I do reach out to as many as I can. But I mean, overall, I like a lot of them, but there are certain people in here that are very, very much liars and deceivers, and I can't really uh -oh. stand them. Okay, just to clarify, are they theists or are they atheists? Or both. Either way. Both, They're both, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're lying about their faith or they're lying about just anything in general. They're just liars or what? You know, are they specific I, I, lies or just on the overall? It specific lies, um, and and then a lot of what I don't like is when people are very mean to each other. Right. Um, it it really triggers me for some reason. Um, you know, seeing cruelty because I was abused as a child, and 
abused in my last marriage. So it's like, it triggers this like panic in me. And I'm like, ah. A reaction, feelings. Yeah, uh, yeah, hardcore feelings. So. Okay, well that's. That's that's interesting. You know, starting to wrap. That's my bad habit here in doing that. <laughs> Forgive me, Shanty. Okay. Well, you have a, a certain reputation for being hard. Yeah. You know, in your videos, and you know, when we were talking about putting together this interview, you said that you wanted to demonstrate a softer side, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could you tell me about that? About the softer side of me. I mean, generally. I'm a very sweet person who cares about everyone, but they don't see that in my videos because when you see me in my videos, I do it just like when I was an atheist. I do it when I'm like my most passionate. Right. Um, so that's where they see the hard side of me is when I'm at my most passionate because of my videos. But, okay. you know, normally when I'm having a conversation, I'm just chill. Yeah, like this. So, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why, Shani, why do you think you're hard in the videos? Is it just you need to, you're getting feelings out of yourself? It's venting. Venting. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of hard in the videos, and now you're ready to move on past that? I, I honestly, I like to vent. I like having my venting videos. I probably right. should label it venting video or something. I don't know. <laughs> But I'm kind of moving away from that venting part because I've I've kind of gotten a little bit more softer, I guess, in the way how I see people now. You know, I'm not labeling people like I used to. I'm kind of just basically looking at people as individuals instead of, oh, you're that person. Okay. Well, how about atheists? <laughs> I mean, do you want to start getting along with atheists? I I I think I do. I hope I do. Okay. Like glute. Do you think you could reach out to glute or are you just oh, I've tried tried. I've tried so many times to like get him to laugh or he's trying to make but up you know with what? glute. He just all right. He doesn't want to give me a chance. I really don't think he wants to give me a chance at all. Um so it's just gotten to the point. You know what? You're just the mean person. I don't want to talk no to you. No chance anymore. in hell, folks. Right, you just you have got to no chance move in hell. On past the haters. That in the background. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you have to do that. And, you know, it, it saddens me about it because I, I, I want to be able to have open discussions with these people, but I don't honestly think they want to be honest and open with me. You know, I think they just like to do what they like to do, and that's just picking on people. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just say for the benefit of the show and our listeners that you're, you know, you I know look like you're the stretching other out the piece, you know, olive branch now to anybody, you know, who. You know, maybe there was a misunderstanding in the past, but now you want to, like, you know, move on past that and, you know, start doing constructive, you know, different things than hating. Right. I mean, okay, right. these guys are targeting you, and, and have they tried false flagging you and all those antics that, you know, goes well, on? Well, right now, my account is actually on bad standing because of false flaggers. Oh, right. my so, God. Um. It wasn't actually the atheist that did it. It was actually uh, Thick Shades, and, um, <laughs> who's he, the anime Christian. Right. It was like a retaliation Shades, right, for the Rancam episode. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got his. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, let's 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 keep vamping a little bit on on the softer side because that's the important part of the interview. All right. Did you want to say something, Dave? Go ahead. Oh no! I just uh, I haven't messed around with thick shades in a couple of years, but yeah. yeah, he was he was really something. Like, what did you make of him, Dave? Do you think he's just a straight uh, up fake or a what? complete asshole? <laughs> well, hey, that's your opinion. I don't even know, dude. I like I I I can't gauge what he is half of the time. Well, see, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what point you made. He always had to have the last word. Yeah, I know. Thank, thank you, Cookie Lady. Thanks a lot. And it's like he and 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 his. I guess from his point of view, whoever got the last word won the argument. Yeah, well, a lot. I think a lot of individuals are like that, David, and it don't make a lot of sense to me. 
<laughs> oh yeah, and and if if it, if he can't if he can't prove his side of whatever it is, or you don't agree with him, then then he'll he'll start to like make comments about you physically, like, like yeah, fat, or you got glasses or whatever it is, and he'll yeah. and he'll feel he's perfectly fine in doing that, which you're not supposed to do if you're a Christian. You're not no. you're not supposed to you're not supposed to like do that to people. No, you're not, and it's you know, you know, let the atheists have all that fun. We're not we're supposed to be above that. And sadly, and sadly, we fail a lot of the times. To, yeah, we do. we do. You know, but I like I don't know. We should be able, but we should be able to admit that we're wrong and and try to do better. Exactly, I agree with that, Dave. That's a, that. See, uh -huh. before I'll tell you this, Dave. Before I got into the Google G Plus Hangout community, yeah. uh I can tell you that I had a channel that had about, I guess it was at the time, like four and a half thousand subs or like 7,000 subs I had. I was talking about prophecy, Dave. And I could tell you, my brother, I didn't have any of these toxic trolls or any of this stuff. It was a bunch of brothers and sisters in Christ that were watching prophecy. And what happened? I got involved with this community, the, uh, the great, through Shanny. And she got to it through Brick Keen. Okay, but here's the thing. It destroyed my ministry pretty much, Dave. It did. My okay. connection was G-Man. You're G-Man. Okay, and what? You saw individual videos he well, had made? What happened was, see, Thick Shades is the one. Well, I guess I can say Thick Shades. Thank but you. Thick, Shades, Thick Shades was the one. He took He took a video I had. Yeah. And, oh, no, it was Flipper Biscuits. Flipper Biscuits introduced me to Thick what? Shades. You Flipper remember, Biscuits. You remember Flipper Biscuits? No. He was this guy from Texas. He's, he owned his own business stuff, and he always wore a cowboy hat. And he tried. He 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 wanted to be like Perry Como or something. He always tried to oh, like stuff. One of those individuals. And anyway, so and he was he identified himself as a Christian, just not a very good practicing one. And you okay. know, he would kind of live and let live. Well, anyway. He he ran into Thick Shades and they were talking about the Bible and stuff. And this is when he liked them. Then they didn't like each other. Yeah. And I and I knew Flipper Biscuits because Flipper Biscuits, Flipper Biscuits uh, <laughs> was going against the Biomop group, and that and I was kind of affiliated with them. I wasn't in their group. But okay. I was affiliated, and uh, until they started talking about eternal torment and stuff, and then we had an issue. Yeah. And, um, anyway, so. So that's how all that kind of got connected. And I put out a video at the time, I believe, in evolutionary kind of a creation story kind of thing. And I was showing how I was showing I was showing how in the Bible, I was talking about how in the Bible, how it seemed to fit this thing and that thing, and this is what I thought about and stuff. Well, Thick Shades got a hold of that video. Yeah. Took it to this guy named G Man, and they ripped it, they ripped it apart. They ripped it apart, said all kinds of insulting I things about me and stuff. And I didn't know I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know how to get on, uh, you know, a live stream or what times Google Hangout. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. Yeah. So I couldn't respond. I didn't know. I didn't know how to do it. All I knew how to do was make a video. That's all I knew how to do. Right. And uh, so I never knew who G Man was. Oh, I mean, I recognized wow. him, but I didn't know his name. I knew who Thick Shades was. So that's who I concentrated on, and I, that's why I went after him. Me and him went at it. Me and him would go at it. We went after at least a year. Yeah, I hear you, dude. And then, I then I saw a G Man video, and I went, "That's that asshole." Oh my goodness! That's that asshole that that was with Thick Shades, and they and they and they had so much fun, you know, saying the things they said when I had no way to respond to it. Yeah. So then I started getting uh, going after G Man through G Man. I went against the Clown Car Posse, the Triple R Gang, and all that. Yeah. And, Greg you, Campbell, and, and that's how I got into all that. Yeah, that that's. I think that's when I remember seeing you surface first, David. Was uh, was the Triple R Gang? I think. Yeah, I think right, they had me on trial. They had yeah, me on trial yeah. <laughs> I, I made mafia. I didn't know how to talk. I I, I couldn't ma make my points very well. I come across like a freaking moron, and you know that's that's just the way. And and they and they would like try to they would trip me up what I was saying, try to get me to go back on what I was saying. They would throw hypotheticals at me and stuff like that and try to trip me up. And I, and I was completely inexperienced and all that stuff. Yeah. 
No, yeah, that was madness. The pre-trials and that shit. My right, God. they still got, they still got it. I think uh, um, that one fellow, I can't remember his name now, but I, I, it's still on his freaking channel. The, the the live that live stream or the hangout where they had the pre-trial. And I'm yeah, in. The, oh my God, dude! It was just crazy. Like, thank you so much, Becky. But it's crazy, dude, because it's like you can watch these individuals, and it's like. Don't you know that you're literally, it's pretty much what they did, David, was it was blaspheming God. Yeah, I, I made a mock video about him because, you know, Flipper Biscuits was teaching me how to do certain things. And I made right. a mock video where like I was where, like I was in an Alcoholics Anonymous thing. And I was like, hi, I'm David. I'm a convicted and registered uh, scripture molester. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow! Did, did I start talking about my sickness? Like, like I said, well, you know, uh, I got I got beat up by some Amish <laughs> because you know uh, I like I like to take my scripture out for a walk before I molest her. Oh my so, god! So they saw me. They saw me with my underage scripture, and they and they all started kicking my ass. Oh my god! So, I mean, I made video. I made video like Amen. that. Every man, even even glue, even glue loved it. He loved it so much he made a duplicate kind of thing. Wow. Where he, where, where he said he was also convicted of scripture molestation uh, by Rand Campbell and his group. And, <laughs> and so so he saw my video <laughs> no, and then he made then he made a video where he's walking by a room and he sees this Bible setting up on like a table or something. And so he's walking by and he's going, Oh, hey, what do we got here? And he goes, he goes, looks and he starts, he starts fondling it sexually he's going like what's a good looking scripture like you doing in a place like this and he starts following it sexually <laughs> and stuff like that and then he goes then he watches he goes don't tell nobody now <laughs> <laughs> i mean we had so much fun ripping into him over that freaking pre-trial I don't, I don't even have that video anymore that was on an old channel but it was it was pretty it was funny it was wild yeah that's pretty amazing so shanny where we had a few nights ago when we thought it was actually Brett, the individual keen. Was that a troll? That may have been, it may have been a troll. It may have been Brett Keen. Who knows? I hope Brett comes back. He needs to. I think David hates Brett, right? You don't like Brett? No, I don't hate the guy. I just, okay. I just, I don't know. I just think he's, he's crappy. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of stories out there. But what I found out about Brett Quick is that the majority is false, just like us. Well, he's he's the one that helped convince me to help G-Man out with the house. Yeah? Okay. That, yeah, because he, he's, he's the one that said, well, you know, your brothers in Christ will help you out. You know, just, just tell them you, you're, you have a problem. And then I find out later that a lot of stuff he was saying wasn't adding up. Right. I under yeah, I get you. It's like the everybody and everybody that's ever been anybody on the internet has problems. They've done something that's like uh like it goes, like my, my question, okay, Sh Shanny had a live stream where she she was upset that he wouldn't get out of the house. Yeah. She told him to get out. And and I was confused and I think Sabella was in the was in the chat. I was in the uh, chat. And 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 I I said I put it and said I gave him a thousand dollars. I knew he already had at least two hundred because he admitted that he had two hundred already. Yeah. And I sent him a thousand. Wow. And, and well, I told him because that would be enough money for him to get the hell out of there and go back home. Right. You know. And and we had that freaking Arctic blast that hit the whole country that people died in. God. And I didn't want to see him in that situation. He made it sound like like. Uh, he just got yeah, thrown he, out and he had nothing. He had nothing, nowhere to go or nothing, and which ended up being a lie. And um, anyway, so then, then like he was on video, or uh, he's his voice is recorded on some Discord thing or something with Brett King, where he admitted that he wanted to stay in the house as long as he could to get more donations. Mm, okay. And then well, when I heard that, I was like, "You son of a." <laughs> oh, I hear you, dude. The like, look, Dave. He admits though he was really like, whoa. He was like triggered out of 
out of the I, I really can't give him a pass on that right now. I it's really can't. It's rough, man. It is. But I, I can't I can't do that. I can't and especially especially some of the stuff he's been saying, like the burnt toes and all that. What the hell is wrong with this guy, man? Yeah, I know, dude. I it's I hear you. And he 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 believes he's righteous. He believes he's completely righteous. Yeah. I know. Know, if i had if I had a vision like what he had, where he's like left out of the rapture, I'd be freaking I'd be scared to death. I'd be scared to death. God's telling him he's not going to go in the rapture. You know, there's only one group of people that claim to be believers that don't go in the rapture. And those are the evil servants. It says that. And also the virgins who don't have any oil in their mind. In other words, the Holy Spirit. He's telling everyone how to get the Holy Spirit and how, how to do this. The Holy Spirit. And he don't even have it himself. Because if he had the Holy Spirit, he'd go in the rapture, right? According, according to the parable of the ten virgins. Am I right? I, I Yes, you are. Let me You're put right. that right there. You're right. That's so, somewhat subliminal, Shani. <laughs> I'm trying to have a microphone on me so I can talk. Oh Sarah. People, people will have fun with that. Thank I'm just letting you know. <laughs> now, don't do that, please. Oh, Lord. <laughs> can you not make the brother stumble, folks? Come on. <laughs> Well, at the very least, I'm comfortable. Anyway, just um, think of me as your naughty little sister. Daddy. What's that? Uh, uh, no, I do not want to put the word naughty and sister in the same sentence. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that's the newest thing in pornography. Now. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, <laughs> hey, not... David. David, can you imagine the rep can you believe the reprobate minds of the human race that they want to watch relatives fuck? Well, um I'm okay, I got distracted with a sidetrack. Oh, this is the Becky good hair is I don't know what her deal is. But anyway, um cool, man. It's um great. uh no, uh okay. If I were to look at something like that, I know I know that they're not really related, they're actors. Yeah, they're actors. They're not. I mean, if anyone's putting out putting out porn where it's actually t two brothers and sisters or aunt and nephew or whatever the heck they're doing, okay, then, 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 then you know they're 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 sick beyond sick. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with people, but something's just really something's wrong. But uh, oh oh oh, Becky Goodhair. The reason I put on the headphones so that I don't produce an echo. Thank you for that, David. That's good production. And we appreciate David for that. It has nothing but, to do with me not going to stop talking. And and if and if I didn't stop talking, you know, too bad for you. You know, you can leave. Yeah, no, we're we're David. You're cool, dude. We like you because you got some good. I think Becky is craving Shannon. <laughs> oh my God. I no, I'm not comfortable with the flirting either. No, there's no flirting. She's not flirting, dude. It's, Oh yeah, she's just being funny. Yeah, she just she just she just messing around, yeah. I get it. No, don't take this the wrong way. I thought this was gonna be a white mask, so huh? okay. I, it, oh yeah. Jenny, they're gonna they're gonna say a racial. I don't give a fuck. You. It is this amazing bamboo charcoal facial sheet mask that you know you know they're go, you know they're gonna go to town on that. You know that they are let them let them do what they want. I'm putting on a mask it for is. the night. But yeah, folks, look. Okay, well, let's let's nip that in the butt before it has any fucking chance of doing anything. It's not blackface, okay? It's an actual facial mask. See? She's showing you right now, okay? It's not for the ladies, for the ladies folks. Oh, Becky, yeah. I this used to be actually, the wife of the party. Um, wait, let I'm, me talk real quick. Right. For, th for the ladies, oh, this God. is a mask by the company feel and it is a bamboo charcoal face mask and because it's charcoal it helps purify and detoxifies your pores it removes oils reduces blemishes and clears clogged pores it has hydrochloric acid in it so it's good for your tone of your skin yeah and it is mask made is by non-woven bamboo fiber. So, you know, it's completely all natural. All the ingredients look like they're completely natural. 
It has skull cap root, which actually you can get high with skull cap. Did you know that? Did you? Yeah, it also has cinnamon in it, cardamom, jojoba seed, hygienic castor oil, raspberry ketones. Oh my. Yes. I have another mask in this, and you can get this in your newest Ipsy box. So go get your Ipsy box, go get your wonderful mask, and put it on, ladies, for your enjoyment. Thank you. I'm matching, girl. Anyway, back to David. Thank you for my um, sponsorship and hearing that. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, do you have anything left to say, David? For now, we could go back to the video. You want to say anything else, bro? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the lady in the chat, I think, I think it's Becky. She, she said, uh, I bet you were the life of the parties. And no, I'm not, not anymore. I mean, I used to be a long time ago. I'm too old and tired now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> old and tired. I feel that <laughs> completely. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, Becky I'm looking at 60. I'm looking at 60. 60 is real close. I, I don't know. I think you look fine, David. All right. Are we going to? Go back to bunch out booze. All right, folks. My boys, my gentlemen, my honeys, my loves, my brothers in Christ. That's right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, if you were to tell an atheist something, you know, that they wanted to hear, what would you tell them? I love them. Okay. <laughs> would you tell them that you know, hey, it's mm -hmm. okay to. You know, just be yourself and exploring, you know, if there's a God or not. It, it, yeah, of course. I, I because, you know, there's some fundamentalists, Shani, they're like, you know, like, let's say Roy, you know, Roy Montero. He's God. like, you know, God, yes, no. And if we if you yes, don't say no, yes, no you're God, out of here. Right. No God. Is your God? No God? You yeah, know, the conversation I, can't start. I, I, I can't shut the gate on them like that. I mean, I, I can't, especially since I used to be them. So, right. you know, my heart goes out to them a lot more than the Christians because there's a lot of hypocrisy in Christianity. That's true. But the lost, I, I see that pain in their eyes. I, I hear it in their voice, and I know I that they're searching for something to grasp onto. And it, it breaks my heart, really. Okay. Um, because I found something that I know they wish they had. You know, I wish they had the, that experience because I wanted that experience and I got that experience. Um, so maybe it's me self-reflecting. Maybe not every atheist wants to go and find God. But I mean, I know there are those who want to have that type of experience. Like, I guess you'd be willing to like talk to atheists one on one and, you know, or not. Oh, I, of course, I do it all the time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chatting with them, a absolutely. <laughs> I do it all the time, yeah. every day. <laughs> okay, well, what you know, we're trying to segue into another. To, you, know, you can hear Chris coughing. The grand fucking so before that, let's, why don't we just lay down background there? Yeah, that was Chris smoking some weed up, man. He probably took a big. What were we smoking? Were we smoking fucking pipes back then, or were we were smoking from bonds? I don't know what point we transitioned from pipes and bonds, but yeah, you could hear Chris in the background. I think he talks in this actually. My ex-husband, yeah, I think he does. How did he feel when you said Revelation News? I don't think he was in the room at the time. I bet I'm glad he wasn't. Like, like Bonto was fucking causing problems, man. <laughs> you don't ask that question. You're with your husband. You don't ask the fucking questions, folks. That was just rude. And, and he fucking cornered Janny in this thing. Well, yeah, if you if you weren't married, who would you like? That's fucking manipulative bullshit, Bunto. That's not right, folks. If Chris was there, I I would have fucking said, Shanny, get the fuck out of that hangout now. Why did he ask you that? You're going to see it, though. He does ask her this, and it's not appropriate at all. What the fuck? But anyway. Well, I stumbled on the question. I just, you're the most beautiful. But he should, yeah, but he should not be asking that question 
when you're a fucking married individual woman, folks. Do you got that? No, you didn't. You didn't at all. And and that's true that you didn't. But the how problem, old is this video? How old? Yeah. Yeah, this is five years ago, David. Oh my goodness. Yeah, can you believe it, dude? Time fucking flies, bro. So and, so why I, why is this why is this relevant? Well, because no, Shani wanted to do this because it was like a uh a historical piece on us being together, kinda. Oh, but you weren't together then, right? No, no. But this, she. But I mentioned here. Oh, she was. With, she was with somebody at the time. She though. was. She was with Chris. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Chris at all, David? Yeah, he does. Okay. Uh, somewhat, somewhat. I mean, I didn't. I didn't really know him, but I knew. I mean, I I had seen him in some of Shani's videos. I really didn't know him hardly that well. Yeah. But I knew. I knew what? that was Shani's. Didn't he call himself the Deli something? I think he did, like for a little bit. Like the deli, like the deli. Yeah, he put out a video against me, telling me that I'm cursed or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, he would do that. That sounds like him. That I'm twice cursed because uh, I don't know some of the stuff I was saying that was he felt was heretical. Oh, yeah, I remember those days. Like, yeah, because you were you were saying universalism and uh, and other things, yeah. The Bible is like not necessary or something. I uh, can't. I okay. I believe I believe the Bible what well, could be used as an idol. Right. Now, I, wouldn't, I didn't go all the way. I didn't go all the way by mom. I mean, I kind of I kind of headed there, but I was like, no, the no, Bible is not the beast was stupid. But uh, oh, well, that's stupid. I could see. I could see. You know, they they had a valid point with the Bible being used as an idol. Yeah. No, I agree with you. It can become an idol. Like yeah. there's uh, that. Like I love one of my favorite pastors, if not my favorite pastor now, is Mike Hoggard. But Mike Hoggard can be extremely freaking like, whoa, legalistic. And what's the other word? Uh, <laughs> I thought of it, but it's gone now. Well, this this is probably this is probably going to really trigger G man to to the nth degree, but. There's not going to be any Bibles in heaven. <laughs> well, there's you know no why we have we'll we'll have all the people who wrote the Bibles there. Yeah, we'll have, we'll, I mean, it's like why why would you need like say if you go meet Stephen King, why why would you need to check one of his books to make sure it's him? Uh, well, yeah, that's true. But here's the thing, Dave. Okay, like this, <laughs> there's the Ark of the Testimony, David. Right? Yeah. The two tablets that Moses made are in heaven. Yeah, the right? original, the one that, that God wrote on. Exactly. Yeah. So but, there is, but uh, there's a Bible kind of like no, kind. No, no, there's a, a law, the law, the, Torah. the law. Exactly. The Torah. The Torah, the Torah. The Torah. Actually, the translation of the word Torah means spirit. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's not even the Torah though. It's the fucking. Uh, it's just the two tablets. Do you know? The, do you know that if you look at the translation of the word Torah, it doesn't translate to law. It translates that, to spirit. To does it? Yes. No, the Jewish the, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. I yeah, there's I looked that up and it. it check it in, David. You made a mistake. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, ha I'll have to. I'll have to go get my Strongs and all that. Yeah, the Strongs and, and my magnifying glass. I know the Strong's concordance is crazy. Because my eyes are terrible, and that print is so small. It's so but, small, dude. But I can well, tell I you, know. I, I I got a little bit of time. I could probably dig it out. Yeah, do it. it. You'll see. It's Ruach Hakodesh. That's why I know it. The uh, Ruach Hakodesh is the Holy Spirit. Uh, but yeah, the word the word for like the word for day is Yom. I know I know some Hebrew words, a few. But yeah, the word the word for spirit is rock. I'm I'm like hundred percent sure of that one. Shall we put the show back yeah, on? Put the show on. Well, Sweetness. On the you know, so you know, people might be listening to the first time to the great debate community. Let's talk about the theists here, okay? There are some hardline theists in the great debate community who um it's their way of the highway, right? You either with them or you know, you're against, against them. them, right? Yeah. And you know, you're you've already 
taken some blows from these guys. Um, where are they coming from? I mean, is that the way Christianity really is? You know, hardcore fundamentalists, or is this just them? Um, I think, honestly, if you look at how I look at it, I think they got a Pharisee spirit. Pharisee spirit. Um, yeah, where they're very judgmental and hateful and, you know, they just don't get what the whole deal is about. Um, you know, people like Veckel, the shades. Oh, Veckel, oh, Veckel, oh, Lord. Veckel just breaks my heart how bad he's gotten lately. Um, you know, because when I met him, he was a very sincere, sweet man. Uh, which is, which is a good argument actually okay but 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 she gave me the one with not god and it was nonsensical there was nothing solid there it was all philosophical nonsense and if, i said nadia this does not prove that god doesn't exist i'm sorry she said if you understand the terms then you you would see it does i'm like okay you're going to condescend to me when you know i'm not dumb nadia i can read philosophical shit i'm not dumb it does not prove God doesn't exist, and it doesn't even say it does prove God doesn't exist. But you made it say that. You want it to say that, Nadia. You want it to say that. It doesn't. Okay? But anyway, that's the old days. We were slaughtering atheists in Nadia's room, Veckel and me. Like tag team. Oh, don't tell me I don't know fucking trauma. I fucking know trauma films, dude. I know trauma films. The Toxic Avenger, baby. The Toxic Avenger, dude. I love fucking trauma, dude. Have you seen the episode of um of the Angry Video Game Nerd? And he actually did the trauma. Let me put that up real fast for you, so you know what exactly what I'm talking about, dude. This is a fucking shit, man. You got a point there. Let me let me go to another one, and I'll pop that up. When the rain washes you clean, you'll know. You'll know. Yeah, I know that about Lemmy, genius. I know quite a bit about Lemmy. Like, who the fuck out? What's wrong with you? Lemmy Kilmeister was a very cool individual, and I, I love him. Like, give me a fucking break, you idiot. Jesus Christ, these people are fucking off. <laughs> now, I didn't even, I, I wanted it. right here, this is Lloyd Kaufman. This is Troma. This is from Cinemassacre. This is greatness right here. I didn't put the fucking thing. Let me do that again. I'm going to share a thing. Share audio. But that's not the actual episode that I love the most is the Lloyd Kaufman one, the interview with James. No. Well, the great thing about like we're actually becoming friends with this company, actually, Cinemassacre, just just a little under current. But he's on movie reviews of trauma. He uh where oh this one. This is the angry video game. I, I'm not going to show it because I don't want to go and bury copyright from him. But I want to show you to just so you can watch it. I'll put the uh, link in the tech in the you know just so you can watch it in your free time or you know now if you want yeah. to. 
But it is with Lloyd Kaufman with Troma Films, and it's the Toxic Avenger episode. So I very much love Troma. I am a horror movie fan, one hundred and thousand percent. I'm the idiot. I work for Troma. I work. For, you you work for Lloyd Kaufman. I'm literally with Troma. I'm in the new movie. I worked with them for years. Really? That's fucking awesome, girl. I don't like Troma. That's fucking awesome. I think they're perverse. Can I have the microphone? He's going to be mean to you. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be mean to her, but I'm going to say that the guy that runs it is a fucking pervert and disgusting individual, actually. And their movies are perverse and disgusting. That's the truth about trauma movies. You want me to continue? Well. They are disgusting. I'm I, it's crude humor, yes, dear. But I... I enjoy it. Is he a pervert in real life? Let me ask you, since you know, since you know Lloyd, is he a pervert in real life or is he a gentleman? <coughs> she says she's wor she works for Troma, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Okay. No, he's not. I'll let him know what you think. I like him, man. Good. I'll tweet him. Look for it. I'll tag you, Rev. Oh, that would be so awesome. What? What? What do you want me to do? She's good. Like, what do you want me to do? Do you want to bring the trauma guy in here and I'll call him a disgusting fucking reprobate? Because he is? He... Why? Why does he get out of it? His movies are repulsive, fucking pornographic, almost disgusting bullshit. I will call, yeah, you get him in here. I'll call him a fucking reprobate to his face and he needs you to repent to Christ before he comes. Get him in. Oh my God, oh my God. I don't know when Vaughn shows up to denounce ever. He, he'll come when he feels like it. He's a little, he's a little sad. No, I don't think he's coming back. A little angry. I don't think he's he'll be back. So. Yeah. Nah, he'll be back. I don't you said that last time and he came back. Maybe a year later. A year later? Maybe. You'll have the entire trauma team, Rev, laugh out loud. Oh, that would be so amazing. Can I be in a trauma film? You could rip me the fuck apart and like ooze like fucking green ooze out of my fucking stomach. Oh, yeah. That would be the shit to like be featured in a trauma film. I would love that shit. Fucking kill me in a trauma film. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and for some reason, he got involved in Rand Campbell and Six Shades. Rand and all that stuff. He, he, yeah, he got involved with them. And for some reason, when you get involved with them, it overtakes you this hate because you're always hearing the atheist did this, the atheist did this, right. the atheist did this. You're right. And it just about it that consumes all. you. And you know, so Tell me that isn't freaking Veckel. He's always doing the atheist did this, the atheist did this thing. Drives me crazy. Yeah, but to be fair, okay. To be fair, the atheists do that to Christians. Oh, look at what that disgusting fucking Christian did to that person. Can you believe how disgusting Christians are? They do it too to us. So, so what? We could act better than them. I agree. We should. And that's what they throw at our face. And that's why they tell us we can't defend our fucking selves. Aren't you supposed to turn the other cheek? Yeah, but Jesus did not say I could be abused and fucking knocked around like some kind of sack of shit that I'm not because I'm a king in his name. And she's a queen. 
And that's what you become. You're a king and a priest and a priest and a, or, or excuse me, a, uh, a prince and a, pr a princess, a prince and a princess. Okay. That's what you become when you're a Christian. So I'm not going to be listened. I'm not going to be talked down to by a bunch of reprobate, disgusting scumbags that think they have some kind of moral behavior because you say humanism is, is, is the way to go. Where do you get the ideas from humanism? Isn't that the Bible? Oh, yes, yeah, right. It's the fucking Bible, you idiot. Why don't you just be a fucking Christian? Because you're, you, see, you don't have any spiritual connection, so you have no reason to want to get better in your behavior. You're just re you're reprobated in your mind. You're, you're like every day you get up and you're like, oh, I do that to somebody. You don't even see the wronghood of what you do because of your reprobate status. Do you get that? You need Christ. You just need you just need him to be okay. And, and, and you can say all day long how good your behavior is. I give to this charity and that charity, and I'm a good atheist humanist. You still don't have the intention in you. Okay, you could say humanism all day. Where does humanism come from? It's the Bible. Magna Carta, Constitution. Let's give rights to people. That's where it comes from. That's humanism. But humanism wants to delete the creator, and it's disgusting. We're, we're going to be good without God. You can't do that. You can have good actions without God. You cannot have you cannot have moral behavior without the creator. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, you cannot have totally moral behavior without the creator. You just can't. It's a philosophical issue, folks. You just can't. It's not possible to have good without God. It just doesn't work. No, man. Does Troma like us? Are we getting recognized by Troma? I'm just wondering. I'm not like... Uh, no, nah, man. I have no, like, freaking, like, beef over him, dude. All right. This is your channel. Like, this is just interesting right. to me. Like, does Tr does Lloyd Kaufman know who I am? I know Cinema Massacre knows us. Mike yeah, Mike Matai definitely knows who we are. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about Troma. But I, I want to know. I would like seriously only me so far. That is so fucking cool. That is so fucking cool. I love fucking trauma films. I really do. He doesn't like them because I'm a little bit more filthier of a girl. No, I'm filthy too. I think they're shitty movies, but that's me. I don't. I think I they're. Do love I, but then again, I like Sharknado and I like be yeah, I be like, like movies, oh <laughs> like like I was introduced by Trauma through my dad when I was like a really little girl. We watched Toxic Avenger together, so I got good memories with that one. Cool. That's cool. I just, fucking love it. I'm just sick. For one reason, just one reason, every fucking friend I had that was a reprobate that liked these movies was they worship trauma shit. They did. They fucking no. They just worshipped it. And I was like, wh why? Why? Can you show me one film that's like half decent? No. No, there's not one good film. I'm sorry, but. I, I understand that there's people that literally worship at the altar of the dude that makes them. Some reprobated old man. Whatever. But this is Shani's channel. And if she likes trauma, she loves trauma. Yeah, but just think. Wouldn't it be fucking cool if we were in a trauma film together and we had a really cool death scene? Wouldn't you think that'd be cool? I can answer that. Honestly, for myself, no. No. But my friends would be like, oh, they'd fucking lose it. Like, oh, it's J <laughs> Jay was in a trauma film, whatever. No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't no, kill me in a trauma film, please. Please, like, seriously, the like, big giant fucking, like, a big alien jumping. Like, but I want green fucking, like, oh, things coming out of my I stomach or I something. Like green, like jelly glue, goo or something like that. Yeah, I think I have a good one. There, there's like some kind of weird fucking alien creature that crawls in through your ears. 
And it plant it can only do it in women because they plant it into the hardy fucking tit tissue of a woman. So there's these aliens that grow in the woman's tits, and their tits just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then eventually they fucking explode. And it's yeah. he makes movies that seem gross, but there are actually messages in them, like the new. Yeah, I know that, that you're right about. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'm not saying he's dumb. What? Oh my god, yeah, that'll be a sci-fi fucking parody. No. That book is not fucking comedy. You th Shanny, there's genocide of the black race and all the other races. Do you get that? They kill all minorities in that book. Yeah. It's not a nice book. It's not a No, it wouldn't. The Tinto Saga will not be a trauma film ever. That's like pissing on my fucking book. That's literally taking a shit on my novel. Trauma. <laughs> he's gonna. He's gonna. He's going to love him. Take it and make a shitty version of it. You know. He okay. said, "You need to know there's trauma film, trauma movies made, made by Lloyd than ones he gets from people that want exposure." Right. Think of it that way. Okay. What? I'll write something new. Trauma may be interested in you. Why? Because you have a good book. Okay. No. You could be a writer for him. Uh, no. Why? I can't. I can't write sci-fi comedy. I I wrote a I, I wrote a hard sci-fi novel. No, sorry, wrong. I the OG Toxic Avenger. Oh, oh, oh! I want to be in the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> oh, I want to be in the I will be the Toxic Avenger. Yeah, you could gender bend the Toxic oh, Avenger. Yeah. Now, now I think that's a cool idea because Shanty's fucking good. She's a good actress, man. She's like a, she is one of those diamonds in the rough. So if you're talking about an acting situation for the Shanty individual, we're gonna do it, folks. I'll be some kind of idiot fucking preacher if you want me to be, and you could fucking blow my brains out if you want. That's fine. I would do that. <laughs> That'd be fun. It's Wyatt Dollar here, folks. It's the end of creation, folks. You get it? We got the zombie situation going on, folks. And then you fucking crack me in the head with a fucking bullet right in the beginning of the movie. That'd be funny. I try to preach them Jesus and they shoot me in the face. You know? <laughs> that would be funny. What? You wrote an unintentional comedy, Baby Carrot. That's pretty funny. I've never heard that one before. An unintentional comedy? That I'm sorry, but there's no way that you could say that that book reads like a fucking comedy. I mean, it. They no, I know what they mean. How badly it's written. It's a comedy for how badly it's written. That's what they mean. I don't think it's written that badly. Yeah, let me see. Okay, it's not We're going to start. Huh. It's one edit pass, folks. Do you know how many edit passes fucking Shh. actual public authors get and they don't pay anything for it? Give me a break. The Prophet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prologue. Yeah. Prelude to agony. Mm -hmm. The President of the United States sat in the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. He studied the national security estimate laid out by his security advisor. The title of the report read, Austria Determined to Dominate the World. The president's national security advisor paced, contemplating the nation's response to the rising threat. Sir, I don't see any alternative to regime change in Austria. The dictator has proven through his actions that he is willing to negotiate peace with his neighbors. Oh, not, isn't willing. 
is it Willie? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I misread. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Not in the mood to read. <laughs> I fully believe that he will continue on his current course of action and eventually dominate the entire region. Correct. The advisor concluded gravely. Yes. I agree. I am disappointed in the lackluster intelligence estimates. Leading, you, you need to add some a little bit more fluff to this yeah, part. Yeah, it's too serious, right? Yeah, it needs fluff. That. Fluff? What if I, like, fucking go through this shit and, like, fluff it up? I mean, we could put up, out another edition, sure. Ah, that. edition two. I'll fluff this shit yeah, fucking up. Fluff. You have a great night, Crazy Renee. Later. Dude, we're gonna go and die in a trauma movie. That will be the shit. <laughs> I wanna die in a trauma movie now. Oh my god, folks. Do you want that, Shanny? You really wanna die in a fucking trauma movie? Is that what you want? You really, really want that, Shanny? Alright. That's fantastic. You're gonna grow fucking alien sperm in your tits and it'll explode them. I think that's a fucking awesome idea. I, I It's like the chest buster, except that it's the tit buster. That's the shit. That's a great idea, man. The trauma dude here, this hangout, is he gonna fucking put that in a movie, folks? Like, I think that should happen, folks. Really? The tit buster. <laughs> That'll be a sad moment because that's your death, though. Thank God David Anthony wasn't in the room when I did that. <laughs> but he's he, oh, I, I, I was, I was there. I just had my thing on out and I was trying to look stuff up. But you're right. I can't find any. I looked up all the stuff I could think of, and I don't know how I came to that. I don't remember how, how I came to that. That's uh, okay. Definitely. It's okay, Dave. We we make mistakes. So, it's fine, brother. Yeah. We make mistakes. It's so fine. you're right. You're right. It, does, it doesn't mean that at all. It's fine. But the Torah, the Torah and the law is important. And it's important in Christianity, too, because it was fulfilled by Christ. And that's how we get into the, the kingdom, man, is he fulfilled the law. And it's fantastic. But, yeah. I'm glad that you have study tools, David. It's good to have them. You know, it's very good. Yeah, I haven't used that in a long time. I had to use my magnifying glass. I hear you, brother. Yeah. Here you go, Danny. So yeah, the trauma film is going to be the next thing now, huh? I'll be some idiot preacher in the beginning that gets his head blown off, and then you, there's going to be aliens that 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 seed you with 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 alien sperm in your in your ear. It goes in your ear, but then it go it seeds itself in your tits. And it's a tit buster alien. I just wrote that, that sounds movie. gross. I know it's horrible. It it's perfect. Trauma. It's trauma film. It's a trauma movie. Yeah. But you, you can... said you said you didn't want your book to be uh, no a trauma. Oh, it'll never be my a trauma film. No, the Tento Saga will never be a trauma film. No, I don't want anybody touching that book like that. Well, no. one of the things one of the things Rev was criticizing is your portrayal of of the of one of the black soldiers. Why? Well, it, it, it was just stereotypical. What? Uh, in, in, in a bad way. He's a, he's a general in the army. He's a general. You, you have to go watch his video. I can't remember what he said word for word, but he he had he he didn't really seem upset. He just thought it was absurd, and he laughed at it. Uh, whatever. Okay. I a, a black general is like a. I think that's no. It's the way you're portraying him. It it, it just well. Do you understand that the universe is such that it's very very rough for blacks in the in the novel? I it it okay. was just, okay. Here's, here's something. Here's something that <laughs> Rev probably doesn't understand or or even cares about. Yeah. But in fiction, you you are allowed to stereotype because that's what makes it fictional. Oh, I see what you mean. I mean, but. Some people are gonna get offended, especially if you if there a lot of time has passed by and and culture changes, like like the issues they have with Mark Twain. Yeah, you know there's there's some there's some black folks out there that uh, they think Mark Twain's book should be all it should be just done I away know. with. I know, and because because of how he racially portrays 
um, some of the black characters in the book. Right, I get it. And, and, uh, it's not complimentary. Right. And I understand that. And 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 look, that's just something I wanted. I wanted to create a guy that was like Hitler, dude. When I started the book, it was not a Christiany, oh, sci-fi Christiany type thing. It no, I wanted to create the worst fucking tyrant in a book. That's what I wanted, like an Antichrist type, but worse. Like he genocides everybody that ain't white. And that, few, that's probably why he didn't get offended. He just thought it was absurd and he laughed at it because he knows uh, that, that fiction, fiction, at least I hope he does, that yeah. fiction is one of the few places you're allowed to stereotype. Right. I didn't stereotype. Uh, that was not consciously in my mind to stereotype a well, black dude into yeah, the book. Stereotyping, stereotyping is encouraged in fiction. Not, not, not in a negative way, though. Yeah. Unless, unless the story is that. Right. Um, but you you could you could like because that's what gives it flavor. Like you can stereotype how people listen to to the radio. You get the stereotype anything, whatever whatever the common whatever the common uh, perception, even if it's a misperception, whatever right. the common perception is to to the audience, that's what you write. Yeah, well, I can tell you, David, that my editor, when she edited this, she said you should probably take that genociding stuff out. And I said, look, it's part of the story, okay? If people think I'm a racist for it, it is what it is, okay? It, it's part of the universe and it, because an e, a super evil individual is going to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't like some editor telling me that. If I, right. if, I had, if I had a story if I had a story, and a part of the story was something that people aren't going to like, be like, you know, well, the most important person I'm running for is me. Right. And but they say but the, the accusation of course is that I fit I make a fictionalized universe where that happens. Am I actually thinking about that happening in real life, David? You know, I must really oh, actually it's just like it's like people getting pissed off about what comedians say. Yeah. Like, so what? You're comedians. You're it's, gonna you're gonna take serious what a comedian says? Then you, exactly. you need you need to get a life, man. See now I want see David gets it. David gets it, and I'm glad. Well, I, always did. I always did. It's like, I mean, you should you should go hear some of the comedians from like back in the '70s, man, like Don Rickles. Oh, they bad racist. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Uh, or and no, that is the stand up, not stuff they got put on TV, but the stand up. The stand up. It was freaking raunchy, man. Bad. Yep. And, and I think we've got that. I was talking about that with Gary when he first came in here. I said to him, "Dude, it's art." And you're wanting to destroy art. And when you're destroying speech so much, you can't write shit. It's just true. Sorry. Apparently, Fonz goes crazy right now. Oh, my God. Whatever. Uh, is he doing a live stream or something? I thought he didn't have a channel anymore. Well, he has to to be able to get on a live stream with you guys. Yeah, he has diecast racing with Vaughn. He does have oh, that. So is he live streaming? I He might be. We're checking it out here, Dave. Just one sec. All right, there's Vaughn. Uh, like Vidges. He has no content. What? He took down even those videos? Wow, okay. He took down his cast, his die cast. Well, in the ch comments, probably, I guess. Or is is there somebody live? The geek you know, room? That, that is the most angry, paranoid bastard I've ever run into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. It certainly is. Yeah. Very paranoid. Like, everyone's going to take my gigs. It's like vibe. I'm suing everybody. I'm suing everybody in the chat. Oh, my God. Like, come on, like, down, dude. Come on man. Drop the fuck down, even, even if you could, you wouldn't get shit. Vaughn just yeah. needs to come in here and talk it out amongst us. Yeah. Oh, God. You know he's gonna just freaking yell at everybody. You know that, right? That's okay. Let him go and let him vent. He needs to vent. It's a good thing for him. But in the meantime, we should keep up the show situation and play the vidya. Will do, my lover. All right, here we go. Oh, he posted the video on BitChute. Mm. See. 
What video? See, here's here's the thing. I what Vaughn's bitching and complaining about us. See, here's the thing. I know Vaughn Hilton's little fucking tricks. He is right now playing the little trick of trying to play bait with us so we can play his video ah. on our channel so he can flag my channel. He's done this to me before. No more, Mr. Von Helton. You're not going to tempt me with your witchcraft, sir. Sandy, Sandy I, I flagged your channel once. You're an asshole. I've never no. flagged your channel, man. It was when you were saying the N-word a lot. I don't care. You're still an asshole. You, know, you, know, you want to know the funny thing was? What? I took, I took the part where you were saying that, and I put it, I put it to that song, Gold Digger. <laughs> and then I put it on my video. And then my video got flagged, but yours was still up. Oh my god! My video, my video, which was a copy of your video, got flagged, and I got a, I got a strike against me for oh. saying the N word. But it's like, but yours, <laughs> you, you're the one that had the video. I just show, I just was telling people you had the video. That yeah, it was, it was, that was just like, I was like, what the heck? You know, I was like, how, how, I, mean, I can see us both getting flagged, but why just me? <laughs> oh that, is that is actually weird. But was it, did you flag her for a legit reason? Was it legit, oh, Dave? Yeah. Well, I felt it was. She was, kept what was it? She kept saying the N word over and over. Oh, that one. Yeah, that's yeah. legit. There was a couple, a couple of them like that, but I, 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 I think, I think videos where people uh, wantonly use that word should be flagged. Well, I, 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 I copied it. I took a clip of it, and I had, I had that woman in red dancing on the grate, yeah, and the, and the song Gold Digger playing, and you <laughs> said, and you saying the N word. That's funny though. That's pretty good, Dave. Yeah, I was, I was trying to go for funny. I really was. <laughs> you fucking dick. <laughs> I can be. I still am. You haven't, you haven't, seen, you haven't seen my latest videos. N word. She took the money. N word. When I'm in. Oh my God. How dare you? <laughs> anyway, you should. You should. You, you. If you see my last uh, few videos from like with the last week, you're gonna think. You still gonna think I'm a dick. Uh, <laughs> we. Okay. And I'll. And if I see them, I'll just continue to call you an asshole. <laughs> not, not an asshole <laughs> so, so we beat each other up on YouTube. Yeah. So I got told hey. Vaughn. So I got told Vaughn uh, yesterday or last night. I said, I said, don't don't piss me off. I'm, yeah. I'm the baddest. I'm, I'm the baddest dude on YouTube. I'll whip your ass on YouTube. You're good. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you can fight, bro. You can. YouTube. Right. It's bullshit. Nobody. Nobody can do it. The thing on YouTube is bullshit. <laughs> but but do you remember? Do you remember Nadia's room, David? Wow. Yes, I remember Nadia, and that, I I was I was really going out of my way to be accepting of her, and and it was you know I can't I can't be down with that. That's fair enough. We've talked to Nadia since. Oh, was yeah. that, was that who was in the room a little bit ago? No, there was yeah. no Nadia. I thought no. I heard you mention Nadia's name. No, well, not today. About. Not today, no. But she's she's li as far as I know, she's still living in New York. Uh, my one my show host from uh, Revelation News Radio, uh, uh, hooked her up with a lot of contacts in New York, and she got the surgery, dude. She got it. She went all the way, huh? Yeah, all the way, and very very happy. So you you helped her do that. Well, I don't want to say it was me, but. You know, I say it's God because look, Nadia was extremely suicidal, uh, and uh, I can't, I can't get behind that stuff. I really can't. It's okay. The transgendered stuff, yeah, I know. But what the way you need to look at it, David, is just compassion. Because well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to like bash him or anything. I just, I just can't be for that. I just can't, I understand. I can't put my support behind it. But you know, I, I could get out of the way. Right. I, I could get out of the way. And that's what I believe. I like the reason I really I just felt for Nadia. I felt for Nadia. And if you have issue with me calling her calling uh, Nadia, she 
It's like I just can't help that because I always saw Nadia as female. I My can't. My brother's help. in the chat. Really, Mark's in I've the chat. Trying, I've been trying to get him to come in to you into your. Uh, okay. Cool. Come on, Mark. God. I'm glad. Not dead. Didn't jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. The actually, actually, the whole transgender thing is so freaking weird and confusing to me. I, I just don't know what to say about it. Yeah. Well, what, what I say, David, is like, you never fail with compassion. And in Nadia's case, the individual needed compassion desperately. And a hand up because I'm telling you, Nadia would. I don't think she'd. Oh, be she was starting to annoy me, man. Because every time you, every time you talked to her, like she had eight hour uh, hangouts, or she was constantly like crying about stuff, and nothing you, nothing you say to her or or do for her would ever help. And it's like I was like, yeah. God dang, man. What I know, want? but that, what do you want us to do? Like, come on. Yeah, that was depression. She had severe depression, David, and. Just, I just praise God that, like, the voice I heard on the other end was like, that's Nadia? Like, joy in the voice. I was, what? <laughs> I praise God, David. I really did. She, it, I, it's crazy. Nadia is like a different individual. Just close your eyes and bite down on a spoon. It only hurts for a moment. What is, what is he talking about? I have no idea. I have no idea, David. Yeah, that what whatever, dude. That's a because because I said that I don't understand the transgender stuff. I don't, I don't yeah. get it because I, I I try I tried, but I just I just don't understand. No, you don't have to, David. But all I'm telling you is just always have an eye on compassion. You know what I mean? Like imagine a situation where you just wo you woke up one day. And and you felt yeah. like you should have a pussy and tits, like that's I can't, I, okay. Like David Chappelle said, like the they, like the LBGT people were getting mad at him, and yeah. he said and he said, let me explain what I'm talking about. He goes, he says something along the lines of, I make jokes about situations that I find you know like really extreme or absurd. And yeah. He said and and. If you believe you're one sex, but you you but you're physically another, that yeah. is a freaking hilarious position to be in. To, well, you know, yeah, I that's as one far as he's concerned. As far as he's concerned, so yeah, he's gonna make jokes. Right. And that's you know I'm not, not saying I'm not saying I'm gonna do that. I'm not saying I'm gonna make fun of him. No, right now. I'm just no. saying that I'm just saying I I just it's just not compute. It don't. It doesn't compute. It I just know. doesn't compute. And so doesn't, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know. If, I don't I don't if, even I don't even know how to condemn it. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I can't I, imagine. I don't know I don't know how to approve of it. I don't know how to condemn it. It's just it's just yeah. like finding an alien species. You, you don't know what you don't know how to classify it, you, you know, don't know what to say about that, it. That's actually a speculation of some people. They think transgendered people might be aliens, but that's like what? Okay. No, no, no. They're, 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 they 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 they've got they've got a problem. I mean you I, I do feel for them on that level. They, they, I mean, that would have to suck. Yeah. I mean, I mean like you, like you wake up and you're in the wrong body or something. Yes. But and see, that, they didn't just wake up. They've had it the whole time. Uh, yes. so I don't know. I don't know where they, how they came about realizing it or whatever. I don't know how it happened, right. but over gradually over time, they started, as far as I know how it works is they started to grow more accustomed to the idea that, and the feelings I'm in, I'm the wrong sex, and that's yeah. got to be that's got to be shitty. I think it's severe, David, because Nadia was also a sex crime victim, and I believe, yeah. yeah, I believe that's the trauma from those things at a young age can absolutely destroy your image of sexuality and all that. You know that, David. Okay, and there's another part of that that really confuses me. Okay, let's say we get past that the initial part of the confusion, and then there's the acceptance and all that and everybody's fine okay then you got these 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 transgenders that are no longer transgender they're all the way to the other side they're all the way to where they want to be i mean you could you wouldn't know unless they told you and 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 then, then you wouldn't believe it because you need a doctor's evaluation or something 
<laughs> it's like like they 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 look so real that whoa they're they're D D yeah they're D D O S and Dave <laughs> right. I think we should start a new hangout or end this now and not come back on. What do you think? You want to finish this? Okay. All right. My voice is like this. Oh, I weird, man. It's I've been working talking there. Long. Yeah, you, it went, yeah, he had to get out. We might have to, yeah, it's the 10 hour mark. If you want to keep going, you, let's just kick it off. Okay. What do you got? Yeah, let, we're going to start a new hangout, guys, because, look, I think StreamYard starts to get glitchy after, like, the 10-hour mark, right? Who the hell is going to watch a 10-hour fucking stream, okay? So let's end this and start a new one. Is that cool, Shanny? All right, folks, we're going to start a new hangout, folks. We love you, folks. <laughs>